Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your host, Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be talking all about the Hero Clicks World Tournament in Memphis, Tennessee. This is episode 534. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. Do you really want to, do you really want to click set? Leadership. Roll a six, make a move extreme. Token on. Take an action from your team. I go straight to your start. Hypersonic speed. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you want to go to shop.wizkids.com, you can use code DIALH10 for 10% off your order there. Only works with in-stock items. Doesn't work with like pre-orders or any special promos. Joining me in the studio, like always, is Ian Eggleston. What's going on, Ian? Oh, man, what a day it's been recovering. That's okay, but we're still hitting the ground running. So Absolutely. It's been an interesting day. Usually I'm more sad when Worlds is over, but I was just so happy with how everything went that I think it was just easier to uh, come back to. So I haven't had to deal with the going back to work depression yet either. Yeah. So that's that's a big part of it. I took helps. a lot of extra time off this year to uh, do a few things. So, no, I'm feeling good. I'm ready to strap in and do a... A long one here. It's easy peasy because there is, uh, we don't have to do it, what made us happy because we're about to talk about what made us happy. Yeah, yeah some the things happened this week, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's a couple, it was right. like whatever, it was huh? Whatever. Another another day in the office, really. So we <laughs> went down to Memphis last Tuesday. Yes. So it's been a week now since we drove down there. Got down there, took plenty of time to just kind of relax, get set up, get things moved into the room. We got set up on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Went super well. The vision came together. Well, there was one kink, which was a little scary. There was. Uh, it got figured out, though. The, it got figured yeah. out, but at the time, it was scary. It it's was. like, are we going to have internet? We're going to have internet, right? And then we ended up having internet. So it wasn't a big deal, but for like, there was like a good hour or so. And, you know, we were planning on doing that stream with the Generation Clicks, which was a ton of fun. And uh, leading up to it, I was like, you guys can still come here. We're probably just going to have to call an Audible and record it. You know, we'll do something else. And then, like, literally as Ryan's texting me, like, hey, we're outside, I was like, oh, the internet's working. Yeah, it just kind of just got connected working. somehow. Yeah, it just kind of just started working. The Ethernet, really, not the yeah. internet. We were worried about the Ethernet. So I don't know what happened, but it got fixed, and it was like, oh, my gosh, thank God, because, yeah, that was, uh, I was scary going into it. I won't lie. But Wednesday night, we did end up doing a little Super Pets preview yeah, with fun. the Redmonds. And they were a ton of fun. They were great, man. Oliver might be one of the new like funniest hero Young players. Young stud. He's, he is awesome. I was just like quick witted, just funny little guy. And he knows what he's talking about too. He does, That's what, yeah. It's scary. You give that guy a couple more years to uh, grow, <laughs> <laughs> and he's yeah. gonna be a an even more formidable threat in the world of hero clicks. But we we got to catch up with Oliver throughout the week. He was having a great time, and you know during modern. Uh, I saw him and Christine walking off. It's like, yeah, we dropped. He wants to go play BRs. It's like, all right. Yep. Got to got to get that new Masters of Time. Yeah. Mad respect. Absolutely. And apparently he was he was cleaning a few clocks in BRs he too. Really? That's funny. So, I mean, props to them. That, that's that's so awesome. cool. But yeah, day one was we had our triple stream set up. We had the couch, which is awesome. Shout mm-hmm. out Dova and everybody at WizKids for getting like the couch and the banner. We were able to just really elevate the Dial H space. Love the two ferns. Big fan of the of the ferns. They were like just the whole set piece. Everything we had for like the Dial H studio, the mobile oh, yeah. studio for our world setup was it just so fun. So vibrant. We had we had way nice. more tables. We had yeah. way more space. We were able to like properly do all three streams. We had that new cool, um, what's it called? These like table the table arms thing for the mainstream. That like table oh, setup just like the, the overhead cameras, camera the overhead cameras. Yeah, that was yeah, pretty sick. That was a lot of fun. That you was know? a great, great investment. Definitely yeah, going to be rocks. using that in the future. Uh, what we didn't have was enough clamps for it. So in the future, oh, yeah. we'll have a better setup than that, like taping cameras note. to the side. But I think it was still Buy pretty more cool. Clamps. I only came with one. It's like what? Yeah, I know. One. You give us this big jungle gym, and then you give us one monkey bar. What's yeah, this about? it was so. We- yeah, <laughs> what's this about? What am so, I swinging yeah. on here? So. 
I've got a little rap sheet of shout outs I would like to give. It's okay. not a little, it's actually quite a few people because so many people were so awesome. There were a lot. <laughs> to hang out with, to converse people. with. And I mean, the list is, is pretty extensive here, but there are just a few things that I want to address before we get into anything else. And that is just like the event delays that occurred. Yes, they were a bit rough. Yes, there were a few hiccups there. I'm sure there'll be plenty of other people talking about it. Ultimately, I think we got through it and yeah. I think it was okay. There were a few things that were like, oh, you know, this is a bit rough and things ran a bit later, but you're already playing Hero Clicks for 10 hours. What's 12? You know? <laughs> yeah. It, it doesn't feel great. And I wasn't a big fan of it, but we got through it. Yeah. And I think that's probably the best way to say it. It's like, yeah, it sucked, but whatever. You know, Still ultimately, standing. it wasn't the fault of like anyone there per se. So it's like to point fingers and get mad about all this stuff. I don't know. It's just, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, I had I don't so want, much I don't fun. Want to talk about it either. We worked through like, it. There's Anthony even had a great fix for it one day where we were starting to post the uh, the top. So mm -hmm. head judge or not head judge, but Anthony Barnstable, one of the judges there, he like he figured it out. He was like, "How would you guys? I just send you screenshots." I'm like, "Perfect." Instead of having to wait for it to load on a million devices, that was just funny. Load on one <laughs> because what ended up happening there were people like people approached me. I didn't know this was happening yet. They're like, "Why haven't they been posted yet?" I was like, "What?" Oh, they're like the pairings. Funny. I was like, yeah, "They're yeah, on yeah. dial H." I was like. They are. <laughs> I was like, okay, that sounds like Calder work. I was like, yeah. he's over there. Go ask him. He's like, I'm working on it. <laughs> so, that sounds so, yeah, right. Sounds that's like right. you know the one. Like, I mean, yes, things can always run a bit smoother, but that's just not. I don't know. I don't want to focus on that. Yeah. The other thing that I do want to address with the community because I've seen so many requests for it, so many comments about it, post world, pre world, pre Gen Con, pretty much every event we've been at. Commentary. Where is the live commentary? Guys, thank you so much for promoting these ideas. Yeah. Like, what I want to say is that it's a lot of effort and it's a lot of time to commentate on Hero Clicks for hours and hours a day. Setup wise, it's also a little tricky. Is it possible? Absolutely. But when you think about it spatially, when you think about it technically, it's more than you'd think. And it's also a massive dedication of time. It's really easy to say, like, you know, see what we do and maybe think we're bigger than we actually are. But yeah. when it boils down to things, we're two guys who have help from a third guy occasionally because yep. he hasn't fully left. Nope. His heart's still in it. And then the occasional photographer who is not going to do that. Nope. And then we have Asael kind of around the rim coming in and out. Yeah, helping so out. So when you think about it, believe it or not, this, is, this might be a shock for some, Calder. When the cameras are on the tables, we are actually doing other things. Wait, what? We're getting pictures of things. We're collecting data. We're getting interviews. We're highlighting different parts of the event. So to sit in front of a camera for 50 minutes at a time, swap some new people in, 50 minutes. Yeah. It's a lot. And now we're not doing all the other work we need to be doing. And so now it's like, okay, well, can we expand? Can we get people to do it? Yes, that's absolutely something that we can do in the future. But it's really easy from an outside perspective to say, hey, just do commentary. And it is a good idea. I would love to do commentary. It, it isn't. It, it isn't, honestly. I also think about it where Heroclix is such a verbal game. It is. Where I don't want to talk over the actual players mm -hmm. themselves because you also need to be able to hear their actual decisions they're being made. It's fun to try to explain like, oh, this this is why he targeted this person or she did that or blah, 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 blah. But also like I, when you have now two people talking and it's like, Oh, okay, cool. I see what they're doing. Now you have two more people talking, bouncing off each other. It's threading you know, a needle for sure. There's just so much going on. So it's like, I, I am curious to see what commentary does look like in a hero clicks game. And it's been I don't done think it's before, as, but it's, yeah, it has been done before. It's like, admittedly. Right, I'll, I'll say ago. I wasn't, like a huge fan of it because a lot of the time I want to say in that video they couldn't hear the players. There was yeah, there were some difficulties yeah, that video with it. Was a Again, tough. like it wasn't ideal. It wasn't the ideal commentary uh, setup. It's harder it to set up than you would think. It really is. Um, so when it's like sports where it's like okay, I don't hear every single player t saying every single decision, then it's like oh sure, commentary makes a lot more sense because there's nothing like verbally happening. So now there's something verbally happening. But HeroClix is like a <laughs> such a verbal game it is that you can't just like talk over all these guys so it's still something i would like to try in the future it's a neat idea it's just not high on my list or at least not as high no, as everybody <laughs> seems to think it it is well and then like you know previously i've heard people say it's like you know they're operating at like 95 percent power the last five percent is commentary that's insane five percent that's insane yeah. five like what I'm, and that's not me. I like again. Like, thank you for sending ideas. Like, I really do take feedback and criticism. Like, I, I, I don't take it. it well. Okay, I don't I get angry. <laughs> no, the the perspective that I resonate with the most is like somebody joins a live stream. It's halfway through a match. It's like, okay, what has happened? 
what is happening with a, a build like Zod or Sanan? What are they looking to do? These are things I can explain. But then, what am I doing for the forty-five other minutes of the match where it's okay? He's probably looking to do this, and then who knows? So it's a lot of time to dedicate. And yes, more people could come, but that's more mouths to feed. That's more things to do. So yeah. ultimately, yes, commentary, I will say, is a good idea. It's something we want to do. But the optics of it are more difficult than you'd think. So for people who continue to suggest that, thank you. We want to deliver it. Mm-hmm. But just understand, we're two guys. <laughs> just two dudes. We're two guys. Just two cool boys. Mm-hmm. That's, and that's a lot of stuff to do. So All right. And that is like the last negative thing I have. Perfect. But uh, if you see commentary on that, you know, feel free to tag me. I will share my similar response and energy to that. Uh, first shout out that I want to do, and you'll also want to give this shout out, is to Luke. Oh, Our yeah. wonderful cameraman. I mean, he brought us some really, really personal gifts. Uh, like, that seriously, one of the most cool. thoughtful things I've received in so long. He got me this mixtape of uh, MF Doom's Doomsday, mm-hmm. and it's like the cassette tape's green. Super cool. He got me a custom VHS tape of MF Doom as well with some like, custom like inside jokes on it and highlighting some of my favorite albums. And there's like a bunch of interviews and like behind the scenes stuff with MF Doom on it. So. Thankfully, Color owns a VHS player. I'll, we'll watch this, actually. Oh, yeah. But it's also green. It's just such a cool display piece. He got some goofy Batman cards for me. Those are and hilarious. And then some also MF the fo- Doom pins. <laughs> the foil on the Batman card, where it was so foiled, you just literally could not see it the looks image looks like a silver all. patch. Yeah, it's, just, it's just like <laughs> the shiny this? silver <laughs> rectangle. Yeah. In addition, he did so much work. But you he, know, did he's do, a, he did do an insane amount of work. He's a man of secrecy. So we'll he just is. say thank you for the player cards, yes. Luke. Thank, Thank you for all that Thank you, you do. Luke. I really appreciate it. And yeah, he gave me the uh, a, one of the Captain America movies of all time on VHS, the 1990 Captain America movie, which is hilarious uh, with like, his little rubber ears. And uh, yeah, it's so funny. It's like I watched like, a YouTube rip of that. So now I get to watch it. And it's most maybe not its truest most pure form. form, but yeah, it's truest form. There's also like a Captain America versus Red Skull VHS he got me, which I'm very excited to check out, as well as a pin, the Captain America pin. If you know me, I love pins, uh, especially Captain America. Well, I got like way too many Captain America pins or way too many Captain America anything, but it's it's what I love. Hey, man, that's part of I the need game. I need it so much. Don't hate and the then player, hate the game. He also got me like trading cards, but different ones. They were like from a, gro- they were like pull tab grocery store trading cards. They were is how I would, could ex- describe them. And they use kind of like the newer style, like generic Marvel art. If you've seen it, like it's kind of the art that's like on uh, coloring books and stuff for Marvel characters, like the very generic, like kid friendly versions of all the characters. But it was like, oh, cool. But I pulled both a Sam Wilson cap, a Steve cap and Patriot. I was like, oh, wow. Ooh. You know, so they had quite the diverse selection of characters and Squirrel Girl. My girl Squirrel Girl was in there. So that was pretty fun. No idea how this card game is meant to be played. There were like some pluses. There were some minuses. And I'm like, I don't know. What, I don't know how you play this game. It was from like a grocery store, too. You like some Canadian grocery store Marvel card game, which is hilarious. But yeah, shout out Luke. He puts in so much work and he's just a great guy to like hang out with chat. Great with. hang. Just so fun. Such a fun dude. Next shout outs. Also just right up there. Uh, Simeon and Asael. Simeon, it was great to have you back. I have no idea if you listen to the show, but thank you for all you did coming with us. Kind of a spur of the moment. I think he thing. does just to make sure my editing isn't bad. I think, <laughs> Keep you in line. I think, yeah, it keeps me in line. It's like, Hey, that's not how I would have edited that Calder, but okay. No, but yeah, it was huge. He was a Simeon massive help. Oh my such gosh. a huge help. Yeah. He really rigged things up as far as like audio goes. I hate working with audio. So it was always kind of like, all right, you know, Simeon does that. Yeah. And, uh, he still did. Excellent. Eventually That's I'll have huge. to learn a bit more cause he won't always be there. So the Simi do training wheels will have to come, have to off, come off eventually, but he was, he was fantastic. Yeah. Simi's always it's awesome. Always good to hang out with him again. It's uh, almost like we're just friends. Crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. What a wild idiot. Who would have thought? Asael too. I mean, he did so much. Seriously. So, so, so much. He was a great just addition to the crew. Yeah. Uh, you know, with this being kind of his second event that he's covered, I guess, with us. And mm-hmm. I know he's done his own thing in other places, but it really is just a pleasure to work with the guy. He's a, also I a always, solid hang. I always friend. appreciate his insight. I always appreciate his like sense of humor and everything. Asael is always just great to, like, again, yeah, hang out with, have around. And he put in good work. So mm-hmm. it was great and great drip. 
Great yeah, trip throughout dripped the weekend. Out. Dripped out. In the Crazy sky. cool sneakers. Check yep. out the pictures of those. I was yep. like, dang, I kind of want Keep those. Them. But I know they don't exist yeah. in my size. Probably not. So they'll exist as a dream. And maybe the drop was limited. Maybe you can't even get them, bro. Probably maybe not. They're outside of your uh, outside your range, little bro. He had them shipped in from like Mexico to <laughs> yeah, Texas. Like that. Probably like crazy. That. And yeah, if you're not already subscribed to the Alpha Strike YouTube channel, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the Alpha Strike. That's Austin Hill's channel. And he has all sorts of gameplay and everything you can check out there weekly, like a bunch of videos. So if you want gameplay, go check it out. Alpha Strike YouTube channel. Check it out. And subscribe. Facebook as well. And Facebook, of course, of course. Next shout out to Generation Clicks. You guys are so much fun to hang out with. Thanks for showing up early, partnering up with us, previewing some stuff. And again, just being a solid hang just throughout great. the weekend. Yeah. You know, at nights, Ryan and Miles both went really hard with their costumes. You know, I can't believe we Miles saw is Gorn. friends with Aqua Miles. Uh, yep, Miles friends with Aqua Miles. And Aqua I guess Miles. Ryan knows Gorn. Ryan is, yeah, Ryan and Gorn are pretty close, I heard. Just, I can't even believe that. You I know. don't. Where did they the, meet? The kind of conversations that they probably have are just so much deeper than any other conversation you could have with a human being on an intellectual level, Ryan yeah. and Gorn. So it's impressive. It's yeah, really I mean, impressive. I was, I was lucky enough to just stand next to Gorn for a little bit. <laughs> the feet of that costume were hilarious. <laughs> Those little dino stompers. So funny. It's like, oh my gosh. So uh, I appreciate all the effort that they put into it. If you guys yeah. also don't listen to Ge- Degeneration Clicks. I don't blame you. You really should. I mean, yeah, you should. <laughs> They're a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, I know they've got a lot of big plans coming up. So you'll want to stay yeah. tuned to them as well. I actually just really enjoy like Miles' attitude and his sense of humor. I feel like Miles and I are, are very similar on some levels with how, how goofy we can be, mm-hmm. you know? So I really I really appreciate all the work that he puts in over at Generation Clicks. He's hilarious. They're casually geared, and they're also, like, really strong competitive players as they well. Are. They're the exact blend you want in a Hero Clicks player. That's right. So shout-out to their whole crew. They rock. Uh, for some players... I got a shout-out, Adam Beggs. I got to meet him, who is a listener of the show. So, hey, Adam, what's up? Him and his son got into the game pretty recently, and he was showing me on his phone what they do to proxy figures, which I'll have to post a picture of or something, but essentially he prints them off in color along with like an HC Realms like screen grab of it, and then he'll wrap the paper, like the sculpt, the picture of the sculpt yeah. around a dial. So it looks almost like a shot the glass. Picture, the picture of those are so funny. It's so funny, but it's like, I haven't seen a proxy that's like... Good? A, that good. Like yeah. That's a really smart way to do yeah. it. Because it's easy to just throw a stand in, but then it confuses you. So to have the picture printed out. That's true. I just, I really enjoyed that. He was also just great to talk with. So shout out to his son, Noah, as well. Noah, if you're listening, sounds like uh, you've got some fierce competition across the table. I hope he brought some home, brought home some cool stuff for yeah. you. Hope you guys just continue to enjoy playing. Keep going down the list. Paul Waller. It was great to meet you, man. I'm glad you took Assassins to Top 32. And it was funny. We were just in line like talking about builds, and Assassins came up. And so I just started dumping. I was like, I love Assassins. I was hated on for loving Assassins. You can do this with Mern. You can do this. Deadpool hit monkey. There's crazy tricks. He's like, really? I didn't realize he was playing Assassins at the mm. time. He goes, I don't know if Mern's the right call. I was like, oh, Mern is 100% the right call. Yeah. So I don't know if any of the advice or you know the things I was talking about. The ramblings. Up- being uh, like meaningful in his matches, but hopefully. So yeah. it was just cool to meet you, man. You're a lot of fun. And uh, hopefully I see you at future events as well. Chase, Duncan, James, the Vegas boys, you guys rock. You guys are a ton of fun. Running into them day one, and Chase is like, hey, wait, I know you. I won something from your live stream. I was like, oh, no way. I was like, actually, I remember you. You're from blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah. Mm, that rocks. So uh, that was really cool. Uh, it was just good to catch up with you. Well, not catch up with you guys, but throughout should, the week, yeah, catch yeah, up with you guys. With you, yeah. Check in. Uh, Saul from Mexico. Thank always, you for the candy. Always. That rocked. Uh, thanks for just hanging out. Also, just another good super hang. Super cool. Yeah, it's just a super <laughs> cool guy. Oh, man. Miles uh, from Degeneration Clicks specifically. Thank you for selling me a Carnage Silver Surfer for so cheap. That's awesome. Jay Patel, thank you for the custom dice, the yeah. custom tokens. Those are so cool. First roll I ever did with them in a match against Asayo. Crit, Ooh. hit him with the rare Robin, Ooh. hit him with the trick arrow, the bonus knockback damage from the boxing glove, get stunned on Asayo. Wow. Um, Illuminati, thanks for the token. Oh, yeah. Thank by. you, Illuminati. That was like <laughs> that was surreal. Really cool. Illuminati thinks you're awesome. Oh, man. What uh, just happened? That was yeah, really I was cool. like, I heard my name. I turn around. I was like, I, was like, I don't huh? what? see anyone yeah, I recognize. Like out of nowhere. It was kind of wild. Just darts by me. He's like, here you go. He's like, thanks for what you do. And mm-hmm. then keeps moving. I'm well, like, thank you. all right. <laughs> yeah. Face to a name, I suppose. It was pretty cool. Our IPF winners, Alex Ramirez. Thank you so much like for just being 
as cool as you were, gifted us that beautiful bottle of tequila. That was wild. Yeah, that's awesome. I couldn't believe that. That was incredible. I, I, wow. Like, yeah. I don't even have words for that. Uh, Nico Taborda for the incredible chocolates. Whatever those cakes were, <sighs> they were not written in they English. They were so good. They dude. were delicious, man. Oh, they're gone. Yeah, they were they good. gone. Oh, they they're gone. excellent. Edison Lee, thanks for showing out with a, a new I, crew this time. Yeah, around. I got to shout out Edison and his crew. They were oh, yeah. awesome. They had me sign their Steve cards. It was yeah, so, I signed it, was it so, too. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, I saw. Like, and then he kind of like jokes. He's like, once it had all three of us, he's had like you, me, Simeon's uh, signatures and everything. It was so funny. And he goes, all right, time for a Kevin. <laughs> I was like, ah, <laughs> use, te- use teaser. And, and then one of his other friends, I forget his name, but he had me sign like Steve's jacket, which was so cool. Oh, nice. It means a lot to me. Like, I love that chase. I love that it was like our first chase that we got to unbox with um like our first ever unboxing where we like led like spearheaded the set yeah, so it absolutely. was it really means a lot and that figure has like a special place in my heart so a really big shout out to edison and all his guys because they were they were also just a ton of fun took some pictures with them we hung out with them yeah a bit. so many they pictures. were so cool oh my goodness so many pictures then obviously got to shout out all shout out all the whiz kids folks ryan john brian dova dusty anthony id aaron whole judge staff, the whole crew, everybody there. You guys were so much fun. You were so easy to work with. And thank you so much for all you guys did. Dova for really pushing it, getting us that couch. She was a huge help. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. Dova killed it this year. Yeah. Ryan getting us the step and repeat banner, getting that all set up. Like That's so cool. The Masters of Time banner, which they let us take back that's to so, the uh, that's so whole crazy. area there. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. John. For Shout just... out John for like bombarding the live stream with here. Check this out. Hey, spoil yeah. this. Hey, do this. I'm like, oh, thank Thank you. Don't mind if we do. We got to spoil like Beetlejuice and Battle Gnome, a handful of other figures. Obviously, all the Super Pets, which is a ton of fun. Obviously, that Batman we got to spoil. Like yeah. being able to like show off all that stuff. It's so fun being able to spoil something. Be like, oh, this is the first time anybody gets to see it, and I get to see it too. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah, I, you guys are seriously incredible. Uh, I don't know. I'll say I got to say Anthony in that too. I can't believe I Anthony. forgot his name. Got to shout out Anthony. I had a really man. long night with Anthony one night. We were up till like three in the morning just talking. Dang. This that everything clicks. And at the end of it, I was like, "Well, I, I hope that was interesting." He's, "Oh, if it wasn't, I would have went to bed like three hours ago." So it's like, "Okay, cool." But I think that's the extent of my shout outs. If I forgot somebody, I am so sorry. Uh, there was a lot. Messed up, bro. It was a busy week. Messed up, dude. Shout out to everybody who came out and just interacted with us and hung out yeah. and. Yeah, oh my gosh, it was just it was so much fun. Am I am I forgetting anyone, Calder? Do you got anyone you want to shout I, out? I have a few shout outs that I would like to get to. So I want to shout out one of the Hero Hooks judges, Dusty. I had never seen him at an event before, and he was wearing a Whiskey shirt. And I was like, oh, I got to ask. Like, are you like news? Like, he's kind of said he, he had judged another event before this, think like Origins. And so we kind of like had a little bit of a talk. I'm like, all right, cool, you know, and had a few talks throughout the weekend. And then after fan appreciation, I was like, man. Really wish they would have shown off a guy Gardner. He's like, I know, right? He's like the best lantern. And then that's when I knew Dusty was a, a man, a high quality man. You know, instantaneously, if Guy Gardner's your favorite lantern, you're just better than most people. That's just straight up facts. No, but like that just means he has a, a good, deep understanding of you know hero host characters and just characters in general to understand like these uh these in depth, really cool, smart characters that are more than meets the eye that you could just. Okay, I'm going to quit ripping on Guy Gardner. <laughs> I'll, I'll quit. I'll quit hyping him up, even though he is like the best Green Lantern. That is facts. Uh, he's also a Doctor Doom fan. So you'll, you know, you'll like Dusty for okay, that. Okay, that's, yeah, we'll take that. Yeah, I yeah, mean, you can, but, have, you can have wrong opinions no, on that. No, no, no. Guy Gardner really is truly one of the most in depth characters that like exists in comics, you know? So he actually really That is, is just so not true. It's, it's actually, oh. no, actually, it's very true. And I can tell you're just ignorant because you haven't read enough Guy Gardner. And it's some of the best stories you'll ever read. You calling me ignorant. Now, that's a new one. No, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Dusty was super cool. You know, and I'm glad we could appreciate, like, the same no, character Dusty and Rock, everything. He was, he was great super awesome. With, uh, I got a shout out, aside. like, Anthony as well. Just straight up. I always have good conversations with Anthony. He's always fun to talk with. He's always fun to hang out with and chat. So, like, that's always a ton of fun. I got a shout out. Man. Uh, David Newmark, me and David had like a handful of conversations. Oh the yeah, weekend. David, you were great. And so he was like a ton of fun to always like chill, hang out with, chat with and everything. Uh, you know, shouting out Caleb Reddick. He's always a blast to hang out with. As I got home last night, you know, Ian like joked Midnight. on the car ride. <laughs> he was like, Calder, are you just going to play Fortnite as soon as you get home? No, no, no. You made the joke of, yeah, I think I'm going to hop on Fortnite oh, that, with, oh, yeah. with, I think, Chance. And I was like, really? And the fact that you didn't respond right away, I was like, oh, you're like not joking. <laughs> it was, like, yeah, I don't know at if that I moment, am. At that point in the drive, it was like a maybe. And I did text Chance if he wanted to do a little post-World Fortnite. But then I, I get home, and I'm actually like laying in bed. And I'm like, oh, I should probably put a few more things away. And then Caleb messages me, 
you want to play some late night Fortnite? I'm like, yeah, I do. Yeah, right. And then me and Caleb play one game of duos. Never once have been a duo before. It's our very first game together. We dub out and win the game. And I'm like, all right, cool. Close my all computer. All right, Fortnite. And then, uh, good job I, building, dude. I closed. We did that was we awesome, did man. No build. Obviously, we're men of quality. We did no build. Congratulations um, on getting that gold <laughs> weapon. We're building Fortnite. But yeah, all right, was, good night, it man. Was ton, it was a ton of fun. I was like, yeah, that was like the per- a great way to end the trip. It was just like, yeah, get home, log on Fortnite, play with Caleb Reddick, dub out, and then go to sleep. It rocked. So shout out, Caleb. Build for my that. bed, go to sleep, Fortnite. <laughs> You know my stance on this. Yeah, I know your stance on it. I know. It's fun. I know what you used to be too. I know. <laughs> Fake. Wow. Never believed in magic till I saw my dog turn into a snake. Oh, dude. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's so stupid. Uh, I have to shout out the boys from Sioux Falls: um, Alex Mater, Lucas Van Holland, Kevin Nelson, Isaac Denke, and of course the kids. Ethan and Tristan. Ethan and Tristan had some hilarious shirts and gave you a shirt. Oh as yeah, well how did I weekend. miss though? Oh my gosh, so they, I knew I was missing some people. Yeah. They had yeah. some great shirts. They had some great style. They always these kids are hilarious. They, they <laughs> made one where all the hero clicks. I'm not. I'm not even gonna say it, actually. You'll you'll I'll, see. I'll some talk of about shirts. mine. Mine was yeah, funny. You're just so hilarious. You're just really it was good. the scene from Iron Man One where Tony Stark has his arms out and the missiles are going off, and he's like, are, "You know, are you not impressed? Like." This is amazing, yeah. right? And they photoshopped my head onto it, and it said when the dial H check is split in half instead of one third, and it's like showing off these missiles. It's just uh, like, oh my god! And there's money. There's money like falling down from yeah. the sky on the shirt too. It's so funny. It's uh, yeah, uh, it was uh, it was a great shirt. My God, you guys are ridiculous. It's, no, it's, <laughs> it's so funny. I want to shout out Jackson Smith. Jackson is just always like, you know, he's a supporter of the show, Patreon member. He's always fun to chat with. He's always fun to hang out with. So shout out Jackson there. And then I got to shout out the the final table. You know, we're going to talk about them a lot. Finals. But I loved... Like, I was telling everybody the night before, top 16. I was like, honestly, this is my favorite top 16 we've ever had. And I know we'll get to it later in the show. But, like, this is my favorite top 16 we ever had. We have a mix of, like, new names, you know, a mix of international players. You Wild know. team. We have a mix of, you know, names that it's Open like, okay, man. yeah, these guys have done a lot of work. Well, honestly... I wasn't even as concerned about their teams like at all as it was like the people, the players themselves, Mm. because I was just fans of these people. Like it truly, you know, and it it came down to it. And, you know, no offense to everybody else in top 16, but Dylan and Nicholas, you can, you can if you want to. Dylan and Nicholas were who (laughs) I was saying I would love it if it faced off between them. Because I've chatted with Nicholas before. He's a Captain America fan. He's a cool dude. I like his attitude, you know. You know, just, oh, yeah, just straight up shout out Nicholas because he's such a cool guy. He's a fun guy to talk with, joke around with, and everything. You know, him and those Las Vegas boys, they're great. And then, like, Dylan, who we saw earlier this year, I was just like, this kid is cool. He's like, I don't like tarot cards. I'm not playing them. He played them, played them this year at Worlds, but it's okay. You know, he wasn't playing them earlier this year. He's been running, like, double Pegasus cap, all this stuff. You know, Dylan Caspalm is just so cool. And I was thinking, like, you know, Nicholas Masters has been putting in a lot of reps. You know, he's not a name that everybody considers. You know, I feel like he's always just been right outside that circle of being, like, the Dan Powells, the Adam Friedmans, the whatever. You know what I mean? And so I feel like he could be definitely, like, a great winner. And then Dylan, I think, is just the dark horse this year where it's like, yeah, he had a good showing at Champion Clicks. But most people were, like, unaware of looking for the name Dylan. And then he became the world champion. So I was, I was like, giddy. Like, everybody can can say it. I was, like, fanboying that these two got to face off in the finals. I was hoping so much that these would, these would be our finals. And I was so happy that that actually was our finals. Because at that point, I was like, either one could win. And I would be happy. Straight up. I was like, wow, this is like a win-win for me. Who <laughs> has like nothing on the line. And so, you know, I, I really don't think the finals could have went to two better players. Well, two, yeah, two better players. These, I love these guys. And these guys are great people. And I was so happy that they, they were the finalists. And, of course, shout out Dylan for winning it all. But, yeah, those are all the shout outs that I want to make. And I think if I forget, if I forgot some people, then I apologize. Yeah, yeah, shout out Canada. Shout out Dice Station Zebra. Shout out Emily. You know, yeah, we can't shout out everybody, we, we so I'm gonna stop. Yeah, I'm gonna stop. Highlights. You we've know, been, but those are the big highlights. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure somebody will reach out, but but what and about, I'll feel terrible. What about me? And but be, we yeah. have a show to do. We do have a show to do. So yeah, day one or day zero, I suppose. Wednesday set up, do a little live stream, test everything out, go hang out for a bit, have a nice night. It was fun. It was good. It was nice. Like previous years, we'd got in so late that we just felt like we were operating on a timer. So this year, it was just like felt like we had so much time. We got time to hang. Yeah. We got time to chill. We got time to relax. The internet a bit. figured itself out. It was perfect. Mm-hmm. Everything worked pretty well. 
And then, uh, yeah, Thursday started. Big pulp day. Uh, Ooh, mini shout out, mini shout out, Matt Reed. We went to the gym Thursday. We maxed out on bench. It was pretty fun. So Matt Reed's <laughs> always a great hang. And we have like the most time in the morning on Thursdays. So that was always a blast. Last Master Mold ride. The last ride of the Master Mold, dude. Which is a sad day, but I'm sure we'll find a new team and we'll get to work on it. I look forward to that. We'll find something else for Matt to really jam out oh, on. Yeah. Maybe it's Camo. I could see him being a Camo guy. So Thursday kicks off. We have a big, long pulp day, seven rounds. It was intense. So much Orb, so much Madison, so much Doctor Strange, Blue Marvel, the mainstays. They were all out to play. Pulp was a lot less diverse than I was hoping it would be because I was last really year, hoping for a diverse pulp. And the was conversation bombed. was, oh, well, rotation will change that. And then it didn't. And this year, it's like, oh, well, rotation will change that. And I want to believe that. Oh, I want Pulp to be better than what it is because right now it's crazy that I, I, I get it. You're in a more limited format. There's only CUR to operate with. So by design, you probably are expecting a more limited format. But like with my heart, with what I want Pulp to be, <laughs> you know, not thinking with the brain here, like what, what I envision Pulp as and what it is. I'm a bit disappointed but by even it. last year, like when we were doing our Road to Worlds articles and everything, and when we had to like make a bunch of teams, we were really pushing our creativity with it. And I honestly thought we built some pulp teams that were creative, that were different last year, that could like stand their own. And yeah. I still think that's true for like this year. But I think people just got to go safe when it comes to Worlds. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't built enough with pulp recently, mainly because it just feels kind of solved. It does. But it does it seem stale. like people enjoyed playing pulp well, so there's that i know people enjoyed popper and so i think the problem with pulp if i could make one change is to get rid of rares i feel like rares are just too strong or limit them or at least yeah maybe one like rare you can per only force. have 100 100 points of your force can be rare i feel like that's too complicated i would say just get rid of rares because then it's like or blue marvel madison i mean right now it's like if you're not playing those figures it's like that is just like objectively wrong like there's yeah, so much exactly, better yeah I, th- I just think the rares are too strong and i think when it was popper when it was like the popper league a few years ago it felt like healthy it felt like fun so i think uncommons and commons are the way to go with like starter sets i don't know i i like that rares are in it but it does turn into well every team it is like just, centered it just around feel, rares. it just feels like yeah it's centered around these rares there's a few of them that stand just out too that strong, are crazy I feel like. but then you lose such cool figures and that's why it's like oh, i don't want that to happen oh yeah another rare red widow she's absurd yeah then there's a 200 point moon knight who i don't think he it's had almost much of a like rares the problem ian i don't think that well it's that you can use too many rares i think if you limited them it'd be more interesting yeah because then it'd it's be like you have a decision there were no rares allowed i agree I don't know, but then you're limiting the format even more. Which and I, I think it was still fine back when it was that way. Yeah, but I like again, like when you think about it, if I limit a field, I'm going to limit the format because I understand. you have less things to And what I'm saying with. is back then, it was still healthier than it was now with that limited. Okay. It really was. And I understand you there. Okay. <laughs> I'm not disagreeing It really with was, you, though. But what I'm saying is you could have a more open field. You could recreate that if you could just have like, oh, you could only use a certain amount. So in the and same I think way that's that silver, too complicated. You, they do it in silver. Two hundred points of this, two hundred points of that. What's complicated about that? I don't love that either, if I'm being honest. But why is it complicated? I just think it just adds like an extra thing. I think it just needs to be simple. Having a threshold. Simplified. I mean, building a theme team is that complicated? Yeah. No, obviously. What? It's, no, obviously it's not. <laughs> I think that, I just don't want the format to be further restricted. Okay. You want it, you want to feel gonna, like rares or whatever, and then I want it to be comms and uncommon, well, and that's okay. I know it's. I'm not saying it's not okay. I'm just saying the further you restrict something, I think you are going to just create staleness. There's always going to be, mm-hmm. but it wasn't back then. It really wasn't. No, but these are new figures, and That's honestly, true. it still kind of was. Like double onslaught was dumb, and then I just what? Never really 30, ran into that. Also, thirty giant girls, and if you still rule the same, like you can only play one of a figure, then that's again another limiter. So it's like at what point? Like, what does that look like? And my heart says. Something fun and cool. I would. And my I would brain hope so. says solved. I don't know. Maybe. I really think like I don't know what at I least want in like the non nationals pulp tournament. I remember seeing like a lot of creativity back in 2020. Yeah, and then those those foot elites. Oh my gosh, those things were. Yeah, those were gross. Those were so annoying. Yeah, gosh, they were nasty. Bring but them. with pulp, yeah. it seems like people enjoyed it. Um I don't know. I had a good time like hanging around watching it, but just it just feels a little dull. There there has to be some kind of change. I'm hoping rotation 
sh- shakes it up enough. I would say it's probably the biggest thing. Yeah, it feels kind of. I boring. don't think it will though. I don't think. I don't. Th- I think it's just going to be the same <sighs> problem in a new box, and yeah. maybe it's not a problem for some people. But the field is stale. Maybe people could get more creative, but again, you only have so many figures to work with. Yeah. So it's just like my hope for pulp is that it improves, but I don't know if it will. And I think a majority of players would share the sentiment of, yeah, it just it feels salt. Yeah. And last year, seeing like Lucas's team, I think if people were more aware of that, they probably would have just played that too, and it would have been a salt format. Sure. Because he was not just winning. He was steamrolling yeah. people. That's another thing to bring up, though. Lucas, the last year's Pulp World Champion, went undefeated in Pulp this entire past year, right up until the finals. He played against Isaac, and Isaac beat him. Yeah, and he got his like, scooped him, skull like, cracked. It was like, fast. Yeah, it was like tough. What happened was... Isaac goes across the map with Blue Marvel, and he has the mainstays. He's got the Spiderling for dice replacement. He's got the orb. So essentially what it needs to happen is uh, Isaac needs to roll a single one, and then he can make a crit hit on his Force Blast Pulse Wave with Blue Marvel and just nuke Lucas's entire team. What ended up happening was he TKs the Blue Marvel out. He running shots, Pulse Waves the entire team, rolls a one, orb replaces the other die, or uh, Spiderling replaces the other die with a one, Orb says that that crit miss is a crit hit now, and Lucas's whole team like you know he did like he did like fifteen damage with one attack, and you know there's not really a whole lot of coming back from that, especially when you're playing the same team. So that match I think was over in like fifteen minutes, but Lucas got yeah. handed his first loss in pulp, which right I guess the that's table. the big shakeup. I mean, that's a great run, but yeah, that was the big shakeup is that he he lost all the way there at the end. He said he was. I want to say 23 and 0 up to that point Dang. for like event pulp. And I'm sure it's probably larger than that for like non tournament recorded stuff. Yeah. So interesting end. He also went to a roll off with Matty G. That was a very no just. Zitting. It was another mirror yeah. match. Just positioning nightmare is what it looked like from my perspective where move up a little barrier, 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 move up a little barrier, 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 Dang. barrier. Yikes. That's... Because it's like, if I let you blue Marvel force blast crit yeah. pulse wave me, I done, lose. Done. Yeah. So I have to be coated in barrier. Went to a roll off. Lucas hit an 11. His dice did one good thing for him. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, orb was designed for Lucas. It's like, yeah, we know you're going to crit miss. Here yeah. you go. There you go, man. <laughs> so day one pulp was, I don't know. Yeah, it was fine. It was fine. It yeah. was fun to cover. It was fun to hang around. It was cool. But, you, I mean, I've already echoed what yeah. I think a lot of people have. And then day one, just hanging out at the hotel afterwards. It's a good time, too. Going into day two, Team Sealed, the best event of the it's year. Just so, it's just so much fun. Team Sealed, just like all the camaraderie, working together, building a team, hoping you pull this, you know, making do with what you got, all that stuff. It's just so much the psychology, fun. psychology, do you put everything good on one team? Do you spread it out? Do you yeah. sandbag in the sea slot? I will say that my psychology in going slot? into it also ended up being correct, where I said, I don't think no. anyone, like no way does anyone put dark side on A. And well, sure another enough, thing we I never learned once saw Dark Side on A. It was always a B and C player playing Dark Side, which is interesting. Some people did not know this going in. I don't know if this is the case for everybody, but you actually didn't assign a slot. It was the order that you registered in. So I think some people did not know that. Oh. So like A B C, it's like if you you know, like with Matt registering the team, he's like, I guess I'm the A slot. And then I think oh, it was really I think it was Luke and C and then Simeon and B. So I'm not sure if that was like public it is a data, huh? but yeah, it's I like I thought you I signed up that. the sheets, but that's what a yeah. few people had told me. I was like, oh, that's kind usually of a you go. Bummer. I sign up, and this is my A, B, and C. Yeah, whoever it is, exactly. Interesting. So I'm not entirely sure if that's the case, but huh. if it is, that's kind of a bummer. I guess, yeah. Um, hmm. Dark side though, a hundred percent thought the finals would be both teams have dark side. Only one team had dark Only side, one, yeah, which is wild to me. I thought dark side. Because not only does he just give you a 300 point, like, if I score any points, I win the match. You have to kill me. Yep. It also allows your team to build with so many more figures. Because it's like, yeah, all right. Yeah, I only have to use one. Yeah. That's it. And we're done. And you guys can use one. Or in some want. cases, like that one team where it was like Dark Side Reverse Flash on the sideline, which is so oh, funny. Oh, sure. And the Wild other aspect taking a Reverse Flash from another team time to too? play it on Dark Side. That is like, oh, you really needed this? Yeah. Come on, man. But if that's what they agreed on, it's just so funny. If you get Dark Side and a good Colossal, you almost have two entire teams right there, potentially. Yeah. And then the other person gets 40 figures to build with. So that's the ideal situation. And I just, I thought for sure both top teams would have Dark Side. They didn't. The team that won also, shout out to all of you guys. Yeah. Logan, Noah, Kevin, you guys were great. The Birds of War. Yep. Excellent reference. Yeah. You guys are awesome. ballers. 
they went undefeated on the day, and they weren't. They didn't even know they were going to be a team. Yeah, it was so funny. Kevin was still looking for a Logan. Teammate. Logan and Noah were like looking for a teammate, and they got Kevin that morning. Didn't really know like any like each other at all, and they won. It what was awesome was like halfway through. I think like I ran into Logan, and I was like, "Hey man, how's it going? Like, are you like winning? Is like up down?" He's like, "Oh, I'm I'm gonna be undefeated all day." And I was like, "Oh sure, man." He's like, "No, no, no. This is my team. It's like Blue Beetle. It's this. It's this." And I'm like, "Yeah, no, okay, cool." And then like, sure enough, he was undefeated all day. <laughs> it was like, and that rocks. So. That was a ton of fun. Like Logan's a great guy. Yeah, Kevin and Noah, they were, those guys were awesome to like hang out with and chat with a little bit. So uh, shout out Noah fun. playing Clock King. That's so funny. Like, there were some oh people making gosh. comments going like he would just base me with him, and it's like I don't want to deal with this. And when yeah. I do, he's now a flurry. Like, Bunch of stop clicks. Or maybe I didn't give Clock King the fair shake. At least in sealed. Who knows? Yeah, at least in sealed. It give him the motorcycle. We'll have some fun. Oh, there, ooh. <laughs> Jeez. Your three movement. Oh, my god! Five movement now, charge. Yeah, five movement charge, dude. <laughs> oh, man. So, clock cake, gracious. deep pull. I was happy that the winning build had the shifting <sighs> so Batman on it. That was cool. Because, yeah, he's he's a stud. And I heard some opinions, which I won't name their name because they were very obviously wrong. Oh, of course. A Vukas Land Holland mm. stated that the shifting Batman just, you know, there's just better things to play. Hmm. hmm. I don't know about that one, Chief. Don't know about that one. Vigilante Batman is he a is so good. Baller. The double quick draw, like the double I saw pew, him pew. popping off. So good. I, I want to shout out uh, George. George's team. Who was, who was it? it? Was George? It was Clay? Was it Matt? I don't, I don't remember. I feel bad now. I don't remember their last team. I'm so sorry. But George was playing Batwalker at a hundred. It was so funny. And they got what top eight? They got like top eight. Yeah, like I was remember talking with George. He was like their team had just taken like two losses or whatever. Matt Matthew Ventura was it? Matt Ventura. Okay, that's what I thought it was. Okay, cool. It was Matt Ventura. Um, yeah, I talked with George and I was like, Hey, I saw you guys like pull like Batwalker. Obviously, not like an ideal colossal in your brick. Like, how are you guys doing? And he's like, Oh no, we lost the first two rounds, man. But we're having fun. And then I remember seeing him at like one of the top tables. I was like, George, what happened after I talked to you? I you said you guys like i don't know man we're just pulling we're just winning somehow we're just pulling it out I'm like oh wow that's awesome so like they really like turned it around there in the second half of the day and like just started doing like really good or like had good matchups or whatever so seeing him on that stream that game so against cool. the dark side it's like yeah, yeah good luck. that, that good one luck, was just buddy. that was just like yikes i'm like yeah good i don't really luck. know how you'd shoot through dark side with what you have george but no no that's chance something <laughs> You know, oh my gosh. but you shout out to them because that was just so funny seeing them like turn around from being like, yeah, man, we're just having fun. We're probably no, going to whatever. It is. And then like, I guess we're on top cut or later tops, whatever. I was like, oh, wow. I think nice. Another funny thing was like the, the birds of war did not know like what the prizing was either. Oh, did they not? Not really. I think they probably just had no expectation of getting it. So they probably didn't look into it too much. Uh, and I made a comment like, yeah, enjoy your factory sets. They're like, what? Factory? We didn't. Huh? That's so funny. I mean, was, yeah, wow. they were just like, you're kidding. I was like, yeah, I don't know if they're Deadpool or Matt. Oh, it looks like they're Masters of Time. They're like, Masters of Time? It doesn't all fit in there, you know? And so they were, they were thrilled. So funny. They were super, super Wow, excited. I didn't know they didn't know what the prizing was. That's Maybe they that's did, great, and they just forgotten surprise. about forgot, it. But yeah, yeah, I mean, if I got surprised with that, I'd be I'm going to get a Master, I'd be I'm gonna get a thrilled, master yeah. of Time Factory set. Yeah, that rocks. Also, on Team Sealed Night was the fan appreciation. Oh, so good, Ian. Which... That was it the was largest so turnout for a fan app I've ever seen in my entire tenure of Hero Clicks. I've been to quite a few of these things. Never seen an audience like that. I mean, we were like were bringing in chairs. chairs you know, know, shout out to Matt Donham and everybody else that was like grabbing chairs and stuff. And Dova was grabbing chairs and everybody, Anthony Barnesville, like a ton of people started helping grabbing chairs. Matt Reed didn't. Matt Reed got a chair and he sat right ooh, down. Just ooh, saying, Matt, Matt. Reed. You saying. could carry so many. You chairs. You could carry so too, many man. chairs. You'd impress just so on many the people. Sideline, that's messed up. Yeah, Matt Reed's one a thing you take guy. away from this episode, it's that Matt Reed didn't grab any chairs. Yep, didn't grab any chairs, and He's I'll a... remember that. Yep. Oh, absolutely. And so will everybody, Matt. Of course. No, really, Matt the... Reed's just a little <laughs> sideline boy, a little sideline active. Matt Reed. The fan appreciation was wild. We don't have to go through like the entirety of it, but the Team World Champions getting a card in the World Champion with art that's designed by cool. Antonio Clark, like. What the heck? And then the other thing is Garrett, who was a member of that team, was in our live stream, and we asked him, "Like, did you know this was coming?" He goes, "No, I had no idea." Yeah, it's so cool. 
Which, yeah, if I found out that I was going to be included as a booster insert, I'd probably... I would lose it. People are going to pull out. my face. People are going to see me in a booster. That's awesome. They did this like little wrap-up of all these things that have happened since Last Worlds. And to me, the, the coolest stat is that they sold over 10,000 starter, HeroClix starter sets since Last Worlds. So those like Marvel DC starters, you know, maybe buying both, and Gen buying Con, one or two. They did like, mention that they had to reorder them. That's they awesome. Sold out. That's awesome that there's like that many people either like just like buying the starter set just for the figures, but like ideally that many more Heroclix players out in the world, which is so cool. So, so, so cool. Ooh, this they, next slide was so cool. There's, I think it's a deceased Green Lantern. It's either that or it's like Vampire that, Green That Lantern. starts to make more sense now that you like say that. Like, but we got to oh. see, like, I really like this Daredevil fighting Elektra sculpt. Oh, such a good I think it's sculpt. so sick. We get like the compound Red Hulk, Green Hulk. Who is this monkey? What What is that thing? I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw some Facebook comments on it. And if it is this, oh my gosh, I think that is Blip. I think that is Space Ghost. Oh. A little pet monkey. Oh, okay. That's and really cool. And if he's then. invisible... We get an invisible is space there, ghost. Me? Is that what that would know. be? I don't, I don't know anything <laughs> about space ghost. I don't know if that's a thing. He, I don't know if I it's going to be like a. Yeah, he has like a cloaking suit. Oh, okay. So like, there's oh, okay. that. Maybe we get more of like the pets that are in the show because there's like some evil monkeys too. Oh. There's a lot of stuff that this could lead to, like and I am. Uh, oh. <laughs> they have my full attention, man. Okay, cool. They like wow, that's so cool. They go like looking ahead. Black Panther's coming out next month. They're introducing new organized play formats. Love to see that. More real trailers, but love to see that. Dedication to improve quality assurance. Love it. More organized play events and opportunities. More accessories and more promos, exclusives, and prize support. Which again these awesome sculpts that are just so sick. I can't wait to get that Daredevil like Electra duo. That is so sick. Upcoming Iconics releases. They sneak a few in here. They say Superman up, up and away the Beetlejuice. It's showtime. The eye of the beholder first appearance, Spider-Man Trigon and Raven captain America from the ice Dungeons and dragons. Den of the displacer beast, the Sandman. Then DC hero close Sandman. Sand. Sand. Cupid, Deadpool and cable, the heralds of Galactus. So we saw the Cupid, Deadpool, and Cable here at Worlds. That was like a new announcement. And then also this Heralds of Galactus, which wasn't really touched on, is also a new one that we've we not did, heard of before. We did see we did, the Silver, Silver, a bit here. Silver Surfer Bat Skull. Cave, we'll see Batcave Volume 1 and then Cave of the Owl Bear. And, of course, uh, I'll link to this in the description below, guys. You can see John. He'll go into more detail about it. He's the one who gave the fan appreciation. We see the Eye of the Beholder, which is really cool. We got to see what the Beholder did and how it has D20 gameplay. Not really going to go into any dials here. Uh, then we see the Deadpool Iconics Valentines, which is really cute, really fun. All of the like special like powers and like normal powers are hearts, heart shaped, heart -shaped yeah. instead of the little circles. So that's really cute. I do want to comment on him very quickly. This yeah. guy has improved targeting everything. Yeah, that is which really is cool. really cool. And they also gave him the Herald keyword, which I think oh, is hilarious. No. No, no, no. But he's also a yeah, marksman. That's cool, man. He's like, Im he's oh, like, like the Herald. By oh, oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were like, yeah, put Khonshu on him. Well, like, yeah, throw Khonshu on him. Why not? No, he already has. But he's problem. also, but he's also a marksman, and so of course you want to give him his, his lovey dovey trick, trick arrows. He does have like the never ending quiver where once you use all of them, he just gets to flip them back over, which is really cool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Really okay. insane. And then we get I to see like that he has that some more cool sculpts. Is it, who's this guy? Is oh, this I'm like, just straight up lying. He has the deity keyword, not Harold. Oh, like, deity! I'm wow, a dummy. So we get to see the big penny. We get to see Batman. We get to see a, a Marvel girl kind of floating up. We get to see this really sick Silver Surfer who is like, I think, is this the most Jack Silver Surfer we've gotten? He's oh, looking this wide. guy's got traps for days. Yeah, dude. And who is this guy? This guy's like Mogo or something. like not Mogo. What's his axe guy? He got like a legacy card to him, like yeah. Morg or something. It's like it's Morg, 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 I think. Yeah. And then axe we see guy. Jim Carrey Riddler, Ian. Oh, yeah. The Ed Nigma. You know, I actually have a, a solid silver reflective you card do. of him, though. That is actually so funny that Luke gave you the Batman yeah, cards. They were from, what was that movie? Batman Forever. Batman Forever, yeah. Yikes. The thing about the penny that's really interesting is that it's on like this stand with a little like. Kind of tech looking like thing it's holding held. it, like it's a uh, the display stand or whatever that so, Batman has, I guess. I I am so curious about what the mechanics of a giant penny bring to the game, but either way, I don't care because I want to put that on the shelf. I want to put In, that on the. Map. Oh, I mean, it's gonna look 
awesome, right? Because it's just huge. Pulling out the old Batcave map and like actually making it look like the Batcave. That's giant exciting. Penny. So now the Batcave Volume 1 makes me think it's like, okay, is there like the giant penny? Is there going to be like the T-Rex? Like, I hope the, the Joker the card. Dude, like the all that stuff. The Joker you know, card like, would the be really, really cool. goofy stuff that's in the Batcave. If they did like an Iron Man Iconics with the full suit display too, I mean, take my Ooh. money. Yeah. That would be really, really cool. We get to see a vibranium... Not equipment, but like a special blocking terrain thing. Again, I'm not really going to go into it too much, but we got to see that for Black Panther. You can like mine it and make stuff. Which... We also get to see a Shuri who then can add vibranium, and you can also spend it to like make these weapons, which are like like not like real like physical weapons, but they are just described on your card. But like they give you plus one damage or plus one defense, which is really cool. So and it's an equipment. So like... yeah. And it just power add a vibranium token to your sideline. And then so it's now just tokens. Remove? Or on the just side one, line. yeah. So you just power, add one, free, remove one, <laughs> and then give somebody this equipment, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah unequip from the character, generate that super cool equipment token and equip it to that character. Yeah, so that actually really is cool. It's like cheat on somebody just having plus one damage. Now for like so for thirty points, you have a sidestep TK, TK toughness perplex. perplex with adding vibranium, taking away vibranium, and then you just give like your main attacker plus one damage. And, and then you she can has also Black Panther out, TA. This figure seems yeah, pretty right, crazy. Stealth. She actually it's an is uncommon solid. too. And she's scientist and ruler keyword. Ooh, yeah. I'll, this Ooh. was like maybe a this competitively really viable good. uncommon yeah. in the in the no Scott Porter era. Honestly, that ain't bad. Yeah. yeah, dude. Just think, giving someone plus one damage for the entire game with a power action is pretty good. And then these things too. I think this is something to touch. These on. are cool. Anything sideline active that isn't a chase, I'm all about. I like yeah. that. I like having more access to the sideline. This is a really cool one. Sideline active. Friendly characters with the Wakanda keyword have free. Remove any four vibranium tokens from your sideline. If you do, replace this character with a 037A Midnight Angel on click one. So it's like the fully armored like Black Panther, like this really cool blue armor. Yeah. I really like this. And the fact that you can just upgrade your Wakandans into this... You know, somebody like Shuri who's just taking power actions to add them to your sideline. Oh, yeah. You might be able to ramp up your build a bit. Granted, she's a sidestep precision, like, in power piece. You're not going to do it a ton, but there's probably a world where this is, like, crazy in pulp. I hope. Yeah. My heart. Okay? Could be. Replacing them with somebody who's the N11 for three, precision strike, and power. No, Full pretty dial dang good. combat reflexes in Volney. That yeah. is really good. Turning, like, I mean, depending on what else is in the set, to turning, like, generic... Wakandan yeah, any, soldier. Any Wakandan, yeah. So there's some that really rocks. cheap kind of like so-so Somebody's Wakandans. on their last click, it's like, nope, just kidding. Yeah, very true. Good. We get to see some sculpts from Collector's Trove, including a lot of equipment, where we get to see the Yaka Arrow, Stormbreaker, the Cosmic Cube, and Mjolnir, as well as, we've already seen the 001 Collector Sculpt, but we get to see the Cosmic Ghost Rider Sculpt, which also ended up in the display case. Same thing with the Stano Sculpt. With also head. ended in the display case. And he's a giant, he's like a, a colossal. Is his damage symbol. Oh, really? Yeah. I did not notice that. Yeah, yeah. That. so on the display case, he's like a colossal. He's 300 points or 150. He's a common. I did see that. I did see so he's just a values. beast common. And we see Silver Centurion Iron Man, who was not in the display case. We just see this digital render. Same thing, a digital render of Ronan the Accuser and the Winter Soldier, which is really cool. Doesn't Saying really hello. Going, yeah, he's kind of waving at you. So I don't know what, I don't know if it's like a... Uh, recruits that way i think he's or, waving to his old buddy i think cap. he's like scouting he's scouting ahead and he's like There's, no no he's, yeah, he's waving, waving to cap he's yeah, saying hi right. i remember you hi captain america <laughs> yeah that's the, exactly instead of being like who the hell is bucky he goes hi cap i know you are bucky that's <laughs> hey, me buddy that's me i'm bucky yeah that's what winter soldier's doing <laughs> hey captain america i'm bucky i'm bucky <laughs> oh jeez so we get to see some collector strobe stuff. We also get to see what like the booster of that is going to look like, where it's this kind it of cool, like sick. greenish blue. It's really neat. Uncover treasures untold with a uh, collector right on with the front Long of the John booster. Silver. No, no, no. Yeah. And then <laughs> <laughs> we get to see a, another one shot, which honestly seems kind of crazy. This is a dark hold. So this is one shot dash dark hold. It's called Evil Entwinement. I'll just I'll just talk about it here. So really quickly, all one shots. We also see the rules, which is huge. All one shots are unique. Once during during force construction, you may add one or more one shots to your sideline face up by paying their cost. This one is five. While face up, one shots can use the effect printed on it. All effects of one shots are sideline active, and any durations created by that effect continue even if that effect is lost or can't be used. When a one shots effect is used, immediately turn that one shot face down. At the end of 
at the end of the game, your opponent scores, you're face down one shots. So this is interesting for a few things. It's not quite like ID cards where it's like as soon as you use it, they score. It's at the end of the game, they score. So this won't be helpful at all when it comes to things like mercy ruling or stuff like that because you technically don't score these points until the end of the game. Just kind of something that I think was interesting to know. This one shot's ability is at the beginning of your turn, you may choose a friendly character and an opposing character than four squares of that character. If you do, until your next turn, when either of those characters move, after resolutions, you deal that character two unavoidable damage. Could be pretty huge right away when you know like your it. main attacker isn't going to move and this can stop them from their main attacker like moving or anything. This one isn't just like a... I don't know, like win, deal a crazy amount of damage, but it's a very interesting one where it's like, okay, well... Are, do you want to take that risk? Do you want to move up to me? Do you want to taxi? Well, what I like about it is it's kind of at the beginning of the turn, so I can't just run in your face and go, you're locked down. Yeah, and, and, be, and then flip it. going at it. Yeah. You already have to it's, be tangled. It's kind of fair, I guess. Yeah, way it's, more It's fair. for both of you guys, and yeah, it's at the beginning of your turn. So this is kind of a neat like effect. I also love that it's Ultron Pym on the one shot. Obviously, Ultron Pym is sick. So we've seen that in the hammer throw now, which yeah. was 10 points. So we do know the points on these guys are going to yeah. vary. And yeah, I mean, making more sideline elements that are just more interesting and not just entirely locked to chases. Like yeah. that's a or good primes. thing. Chases or, or primes. primes yeah. yeah. So I like that. It's like, let's find some things that aren't super high rarity that can be useful as well, because that can be such a big decider in how expensive a team is. Yeah. So depending on how these are dis- uh, distributed, I think there's uh, some really big potential for these to be fun, cool, and hopefully shake the game up a bit. That's always what you're looking for is to shake the game yeah. up. And this looks like something that can do that. Oh my gosh, this next one I have to talk about at least a little bit. pretty cool. Beta Ray Bill, John makes a comment about this in the video saying, he's like, I saw some comments saying, I hope he's at least a super rare. He's like, I'm happy to deliver. This guy is wild. Beta Ray Bill is so cool. The only thing I'm going to talk about is the damage special, which is just leadership. Characters can't use cosmic energy. That's wild. Yeah. You days are it's numbered. Really, All you tent really, really, really strong. Numbered. Really, really good. <laughs> that is, uh, that's sick. I absolutely love it. He also has a fun trait that like can help protect his team. Looks like he's really centered around doing knockback and helping his friendly guardians do the same. Check this dial out and tell me you are not just amped for this collector's is troll. Very much the um, as guardians of the galaxy beta ray bill because like that was when he was like a guard. I, I think that's when he was most notably a guardian at the very least. Um, so yeah, I like Beta Ray Bill. He's really fun. I'm looking forward to building with this piece already. <laughs> we get to see more sculpts from the Spider Verse set, which is coming out. I believe John said his favorite was the Captain Britain Spider UK, and he is like drinking tea in his teacup. Standing on a teacup, he's standing on like the tea saucer, and then even his little teacup has like the Union Jack on it, which is pretty dang funny. And then we get to see. A, like, 2099? We see 2099. We had to see Spider-Punk, and we get, we get to see The Wall, who I've only known about The Wall because there's one guy in the Marvel Snap Facebook group. I don't know if you ever remember this, dude. He was always posting his custom Marvel Snap cards, and he always had The Wall. Like, always, like, <laughs> he was really pushing The they Wall. Know this guy. No. And I was like, who is The Wall? And he's just like, he's just this. He's like he's a dude who's like, with legs. doesn't have a body, and he's a brick wall. I mean, if like, you thought little Thing got face. it bad, this guy. Yes, dude, oh. Yeah, dude, These no guys. kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's so uh, I don't I don't know what this guy is gonna do, but I don't I'm know. It's hilarious. My my theory on him is that his dial will have like the the destroy values for him Ooh, in the dial, and like he has like that brown ring yeah. maybe, where and it's maybe like, it's like when he takes blocking. damage, you click him, and maybe he gets weaker, like easier mm. to destroy, and then he'll have some kind of mechanics where he can like maybe I don't know, like block oh. people off, block. I don't know, like do something that a blocking terrain does, right? That's so really cool. I think he'll have like some kind of clickable destroy values or something. That's my guess. But what's the most important thing here is we're finally getting, I think, a Venom that's truer to the size Venom needs to be, baby. We need the this big Venom trap lord, the shoulder god. I want the, you know, like Knights of Vengeance oh, Venom. I think that's his trap, Spider-Man right? Spider-Man 316. Is that his trap or his shoulder? I don't know. This dude, this Venom is huge, though. He's Boulder. muscular, yeah. That's Venom, baby. Enough of the, I'm standing here, Venom. I'm skinny, He's Venom. He's big. I like, want Matt Reed Venom. Over. This is Matt Reed Venom. Matt Reed this Venom. is definitely Matt Reed Venom. We get to see Smash and Destroy, which I believe previously didn't have a logo. Now we can put a logo to the set, which is cool. It reminds me of like, the says, Lagoon. 
like the the, the swamp thing, like lagoon, like logo. You know, like it looks like the kind oh, of like from like the swamp font. thing, like TV show. Or yeah, like no, 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 no. Like the like the like the Super Friends. Or no, like the Woody? old horror movies, like the. Oh. Oh, creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah, like dude. That? That's oh, what this okay, font looks okay. Like. I got if you. Put this on like a flag and like waved it a bit. <laughs> oh, it would look that like, rippling effect. Yeah, okay, it no, it took me like a second. I got that. what you mean. But I like it. I think it's cool. It says, "Break the city, interactive terrain in new ways, and all new effect terrain." So this is something I was talking about a few weeks ago, where I feel like we haven't used terrain all that much, and it feels like in the game of Heroclix, terrain is just okay. This is in your way. Um, I'm blocking this. Now, yeah. like it doesn't feel like there's all that many cool. I'm using terrain. this to protect me. Yeah, it's either protection for me, or I'm cutting annoyance off annoyance for you, or annoyance <laughs> for you. So I'm really excited that they're going to be leaning more into terrain and hopefully having some more creative ideas and effects and like just things that you know people can even do with terrain because to me it just feels like it was introduced and like pretty much that's all people did with it and then not much else crazy stuff happened and then we got you know we got some special terrain in a sixty and then we just haven't since then so I would like to see more of that so you know fingers crossed. We see the same Juggernaut sculpt that we saw at Gen Con, but then we also get to see this like Lady Thor with the big sword sculpt. She, cloud from Final she's Fantasy. She's huge. Meets insane clown it's posse. Very much that like Thor costume when he is like the uh, Herald of Galactus. It has that like sideways like L sort of shape white stripe across it. And then it's we see very cool, but I not this like, like this at all. Bird this red bird lady thing with big old, big old talon feet. On the side of a reminds building. Reminds me of uh, those Yu-Gi-Oh cards. The uh, gosh, the fed, the winged. I don't like the. It's not vulture. Is not the. Sorry, word. man. If it's if it's not alligator flame swordsman or whatever. I don't <laughs> alligator flame. Sorry, swordsman. flame swordsman is separate. Alligator swordsman is also separate. I'm whatever sorry. Yu-Gi-Oh stands out there. Like harpies. 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 Oh harpies? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. Their the first Harpy's scary. Feather Duster was the card. Yes, it was. You're right. Harpy's yeah. Feather and Duster. Then she, That's hilarious. There was the girl on the show who played like all the, the Harpies. I was yeah. never a huge fan of them, so I don't know any of the that specific That was Tristan's ones. sister, I want to say. I forgot her name was, though. It's been a while since I watched it, yeah. We get to see talking some... talking about Tristan Halverson? No, 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 no. No, <laughs> the, brown, the brown-haired guy who eventually turns into like a robot monkey or whatever in Yu-Gi-Oh! In the OG Yu-Gi-Oh! series. I think his name is Tristan. Okay, I'm pretty sure. Right. I think, yeah, I think, I think it is. And I'm pretty sure that was his sister. I don't think it was... Yeah, I think so. Anyways, the Lantern Legacy set also gets a logo, which looks sick. We get to see a little Roy G. Biv action going on here. Infinity Mirror Tron pattern. Yeah, it looks awesome. It's very colorful. It's what it should be. Spiritual successor to War of Light. Makes sense. It's a lantern set. It's got a lot of lanterns. Mm -hmm. New lantern constructs. Oh, baby. I'm I'm pro constructs no matter what they end up doing. Mm-hmm. So if they end up making more like equipment style constructs, that's sick. Please and thank you. If two characters if were to have make... a civil war about constructs, I know what side I'm on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I am pro construct. I am uh, uh, absolutely pro construct, hundred <laughs> percent. And then so there's like construct construct where it's like they're a bystander. You know, I'm pro that. I'm mm-hmm. pro equipment yeah. or even like more things that they could do with constructs. Whatever it is, love constructs. Love seeing that clear plastic. Give it to me. Give it to me now. Unclicks lanterns make their debut. This is always sick. There are so many unclicks lanterns. Do it up. Dual ring lanterns. That is awesome. There have been several moments in comics where lanterns have dual wielded rings, and it's sick. Then this is also really cool. The return of Hero Glow. So it's been a while since Wheels of Vengeance, almost a year since Wheels of Vengeance came out. We've never saw the Hero Glow come back. And this is like the perfect set to have Hero return Glow. Return of the Glow. It is return, return of the Glow. glow. Come on. One of the Hero Glow figures we see is this red, or sorry, excuse me, blue and green Hal Jordan. Calder, are you colorblind? <laughs> I, well, maybe, maybe. And so he's on like a green base, which I assume yeah, they also on, have Hero go. Glow up here in the top right. So it's probably glows like green, which is really crazy cool. So we see this like Hal Jordan figure who is who is huge. It's, it's billing Hal Jordan at six foot. But he's crouched a little bit at the knees, so he's only like five, six, and I guess. But yeah, this is a really cool figure. He's got some green and blue effect. He's cut down the middle of green and blue lantern. Like this is really sick, sick, and I can't wait. Colored to Colored bases, like. even more. Just so colored bases are awesome. Blue. We just need more yeah, colored bases, just, please. Oh my gosh, I they love just, them. I don't know something about them. Just makes something feel it so makes special. The chase theme. Oh, it makes the chase so feel much more instantly, fuller. so much better. Yes. 
you know, when they started doing chases with just like black bases, it was like this feels so much less special. It doesn't mm-hmm. feel like a chase anymore, honestly. I wouldn't go that far. But I would go that far. As far as like when you have them in a grouping, it is so much cooler to have them have the same. They all have the same. Color. It makes them feel more intertwined. Yeah. Like the Disney Plus ones having the colored bases was awesome, yep. even though they weren't necessarily all They weren't from connected. The same they thing. weren't really a theme. But, but they, they felt they more felt, so. Yeah, they the did. The Doom ones are my favorite. Yeah, as far I as think like the Doom go, ones and like the, to me, like the 2013 like Iron Man ones. The red ones. Because cool. they're all like red bases and they're all obviously like red and gold Iron Man armor. Ooh, those Spider Man ones with the webbing on top were all. Those were really, so those actually sick. were really neat. Those that was cool. a really cool design. And then, and then uh, also, you know, they weren't colored, but they were like. This was a really cool take. The oh, translucent AI? ones. Yeah. Oh no no, you mean um. Yeah, AI. The translucent ones with. The, oh yeah, AI had like the black the translucent, the sparkling, but there's also the translucent ones, I guess. In Avengers, Avengers yeah. yeah, which was also really cool. They're all cool. That's they're just the yeah, resounding colored, colored <laughs> special here. bases of anything. Really we'll cool, take them. especially on the chase theme. But then we get to see the ultraviolet lantern ring, and with some text, and also John kind of said this like, "Hey, hold on to your rings." Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I uh, I heard a lot of theories about over the weekend. Are we looking at legacy carded equipment? That seems to be the prevailing theory that, like, yeah, all, like, the lantern rings are just going to get legacy carded, which would be really sick, obviously, because I know when they first came out with all these lantern rings, people were like, oh, man, I wish I could use my ones from War of Light. And I was like, all right, well, that was, like, 11 years ago or nine years ago at the time, so... That seems a little crazy, but maybe because these are so much closer to BTU, maybe they will just like straight up legacy card the rings instead of re-release them again, or maybe they'll re-release them and also legacy card them. Yeah, are they going to do different things? Cool. Are they going to Ooh, like? That'd be interesting if they did do different. Add things. a new mechanic with the existing rings. Are they going to kind of you know you mentioned like it, dual wielding? You know, maybe there's <sighs> some potential there with old I and new d- i do hope there's like a chance where it's like yeah if they are both like red or green or like green and blue right mm-hmm. they can hold both uh both rings or something yeah that would oh be really so. sick that would right? be how, ugh, that how would cool rock. would that be so maybe they have to hold like an older ring for one of the colors a newer ring for yeah one of the something colors. like that or some, where, you know if there's potential to have way. them like work old to new I don't know. There's so many directions. But what I do know, I wasn't going to sell them anyway, but now I'm no. really not selling them. Like, I'm definitely keeping all my lantern constructs, all my rings. They're also just, like, straight up on display <laughs> in the shelf, which mm-hmm. looks too cool to, like, get rid of. And the constructs are still just, man, one of my all-time favorite mechanics they've ever added to Hero Clicks. Oh, and yeah. I just love just I just love making constructs so much. So, like, that's never going to stop on, like, Silver or Golden Age teams. We play so much Silver and Golden at Dragon's Lair and here in Omaha where it's like rotation really doesn't affect me, you know. It, and honestly, it really never has because I play casually so that's often. True. All rotation effects is, like, when I actually want to play hard and play crazy, it just makes it more interesting from year to year. Yeah. Versus, like, it never actually stops me from playing the things I love Oh, yeah, playing. my collection ain't going anywhere. Oh, no. Yeah, absolutely. Zero chance of I ain't getting rid of, of this that. stuff. This stuff is too awesome. But, yeah, that's the fan appreciation. Had to spend a little bit of time on that, guys, because it was just so sick. I just love. I love when they do fan appreciation. I love it so much. We got so much good stuff this year. We have so much cool stuff coming down the pipeline, Ian. Indeed. Saturday. Saturday. Ooh, Big day. Ooh, baby. Early day. My favorite day, yeah. Uh, this was also the night I got the least sleep because, again, just had a great night with Anthony. It was a good it was time talking with him. It was a fun time. But, man, this was just – this is always my favorite day. Well, actually, Sunday is my favorite day, but this is my second favorite day. <laughs> yeah. Kickoff. Sitting down with some players, talking about what they're playing, you know, what's coming to the big dance. Mm. I have to mention this. Uh, every year, I well, both years we've done it now – I have talked to Devin, and I ask, so, Devin, what is the team that you do not want to sit across from today? And he'll tell me. And then round one, he sits across from it. I re-listened to that earlier today yeah. when I was, like, checking out the stream to, like, find some highlights. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow, that so, really did happen. Devin had mentioned that to me. He goes, I think I have to stop doing that. I was like, we'll just rephrase the question. We'll do a little reverse psychology. <laughs> you know, we'll ask, what, what do you want to sit across from? Maybe we can shift the bad mojo. But it is always fun to hop into the mind of the Hero Clicks players where they can now be public because they've shared their build sheet. There's a few more people private than others. It's also really fun to like, you know, see the players that maybe you worked with or helped test, see how they do. So getting to hear from those people as well is a lot of fun. Going into modern is always just it's my favorite thing. I love to study it when you know you're right before the big dance. Also, and there's so much really, to work with. Like, a big thank you to all the Hero Clicks players that were playing in modern 
who were so easy and receptive to take pictures of their build sheets. Me and Asael did not really have anybody have any pushback. Mm-hmm. And in, in years past, that was not the case. Sometimes yeah. people will be like, no, I don't want you taking a picture of my build sheet. I'm like, no, I really do. Don't worry. It's not going to go up until after round one. Your team will already be locked in, whatever. Don't worry about it. You can't change it. And and this year, everybody was so cool and so easy with it. It was like, yeah, pay a picture of your build. And it's like, oh, yeah, of course. So now we're finally like established well enough at events because people online want to see what you're playing. Thing, you know? know, and it's not crazy, gonna, and like it's really not going to affect you all Ooh, that like at all. Would have thought, yeah, exactly. So, you know, all those kooky modern players at the event just digging through Facebook, getting yeah. a read on your build. They'll just walk by you. They'll see your team. They're going to see your team anyways, and they, even then, they don't know what your tactics are. No. And that is so true in the uh, the fact that there are a few team builds I, I do want to like highlight. Isaac was playing. I want to say the exact same team that he played at the Champion Clicks Qualifier in Newark, which I still don't know how to run. No, um, and I. Think we got him on stream maybe once or twice we on did. modern. Okay, so I need to rewatch it because man, I try to watch the other streams and he was just too dominant. Colors team that he likes has Spider Man Prime on it. I well, I really do. Just well, uh, the worst part is is like you were What's right about the Spider Man Prime thing because when I did play him, I was like, dang, this He's really so is fun, this dude. really is my kind of figure. But man, I hate him so much. No, which is so tough. He's cool looking. But, um, and he's too fun to play. Yeah, but he. I do. I actually would jerk. say one thing. I wish he was doing his like pose from that Secret Wars issue that he's based off of, oh, the kind sure. of goofy like jazz hands pose. <laughs> I'm okay with it not being that. That's fair. Yeah, that's that's fair. fair. But I but I like that it's like I like it so much that version. Sand. I just wish it was. Sand. Sand. <laughs> that makes no sense. No. Oh, you guys could gosh. see us. You'd laugh. You would. He guys would get it. Um, hit them, and then also there was a team that was <laughs> Cap Wolf, Pegasus Cap, and Camo Animal Team, which was such a cool. Whoa. team he ended Three up going like hits one in four though which is tough luck and he said he had close games but i did it like that was just another team during Ooh. during taking pictures Dude, gotta shout like, this, this one so out. awesome this guy was playing three dancing peacemakers and then oh, two yeah. legacy death strokes so let's talk about the mechanics of that very briefly because i'm sure you're like why the three dancing peacemakers all have a free you can move your opponent two squares forward and so you can move somebody six squares, like entire team six squares. The death strokes have an ability where if you base them, they get to roll a D6 and you just take that much damage. So, you know, if you have the choice, oh. you're never going to move next to death stroke. But if you don't have the cha- choice, it's like, do you, do you really want to? You don't have the choice. I'm just going to make you take six. So apparently Brian had relayed to me that, you know, he made a Kong move adjacent to a death stroke and then he just rolled a six and it died. <laughs> Which is oh so, my gosh. so cool. He's like, you have to get this on stream. I was like, you know, I'll, I'll have to take a look. I watched his next match. It was over in like 10 minutes. And I was like, this is probably not. This is that either. Is kind of wild. You know. Yeah. But really cool mechanics. That's awesome. Great building. I, I love that one. Ooh, also, Josiah, who played the triple Ghost Rider, triple Very motorcycle Chad. again. Very Such Chad. a Chad build. Love to see it. Yeah, there's just a lot of fun team builds. It was out fun there. to hear people complain about that one where it's like, what am I supposed to do? It's like, that's the beauty of yeah, it. Yeah. You just have to part. hope he kind of misses his rollouts. Uh, speaking of a Chad off, we had a, at the beginning of round three, right? Two and oh, Kevin Nelson versus Michael Love had a. Uh, both had, playing one of my favorites. Both, both Phoenix playing Wolverine. Phoenix Wolverine at full, which is so awesome. I do love that. Hilarious. Him. And, you know, there's so much chatter. There was so much hatred for this figure early on. There was a lot. I don't know why. Like, and people, that's like the one man army people are electing to play. So yeah, I know we championed him. I'm I think happy he's cool. To, I do he's think he's fun. cool. I love seeing people. He's play a one man army who promotes like locking in and yeah. staying locked in instead of just like whatever. And score running points away. Run away. Yeah, he's not a score points run away one man army, which is cool. Please. So yeah, there was another build that was really cool. Was Nick Ballou, who this was a build that was largely workshop by Miles awesome. Kane. And we had many Discord calls about this, and Miles would try to explain this build and how good it was. I'm like, yeah, okay, dude. I'm sure. Yeah. Legacy Green Lantern at 175 with Conchu on him. You had Mad Jim. You had Butterfly to bring in Mern from MOE. You had Trick Arrows and Sinestro Ring on the sideline to optionally equip, but can't go to Green Lantern. It's got the Avatar. And then a black shirt, Scott Porter. So essentially, this team can generate a ton of barrier, like so much barrier. And then you use Mern to shoot through all that barrier from like 10 to 13 squares away. So you just have like the sniper in Green Lantern and it caught so many people off guard. The best part of it is it is a politician theme. 
which we were joking about. That is so funny. We were literally saying politicians, politicians. so OP, you have to nerf it. Ugh. The only loss Nick had as well was against the world champion. So to see a team like that, that is so outside of the box. How many We wrote off Mad Jim Jaspers, I think, on the show. Like, I know he's playing that guy. He just, I don't know if we there. totally wrote him off, did we? I don't think we but he totally was never wrote him in our off. prime consideration. No. I will say that he was not. I, in our prime I was. Consideration I'm pretty sure I was in the camp of you just play Elsa. Yeah, which I guess that is true. Isn't always the case, but Green Lantern gets two free squares of barrier. A ring yep. gets you four more. Mad Jim gets you six, and then you have and whatever really, terrain I, you brought to the table. I so appreciate it so much. It's because, crazy, man. Some people are just like, yeah, 20 points. Obviously, just play him at 20 points. 20 points. That's his effective whatever cost. And he's like, no, I'm going to play him at full points. I'm going to kind of ball Miles out. Miles is in the lab just like and That's so up cool. The, so, so cool. The stinkiest pot and I, of Iron Man. Like, that was like one of Nick's like favorite characters, too. Or at least like back oh, in really? the day, it was like one of his favorite pieces. So he's like, hey, Nick, you, know, you love playing him back in the day. You're going to play him how you used to play him as the big tent poles, big yeah. piece. And I'm like, that's so cool. So I love, I just love that kind of team building. It's so awesome. Miles builds the most out of the box stuff. Insane. And he he strongly needs. What to, goes on like, inside? He's that, got a cauldron. I'm head. telling you, like what he brews is just. Why did you even think of this? Like what happened? So I don't even know. But Miles, please be more public with your crazy builds because I love them, and I know the public will love too. I do love them. I also love Andre Gattini's team. He had Soldier Supreme, which freaking Deep rocks. Point. And the fact that he got like top eight with Soldier Supreme is gnarly. Like, man, like no one was really playing Soldier Supreme like much at all. So it's just crazy. Cool. I don't think anyone. Like, I don't think yeah. anyone. Yeah, I don't think anyone was playing him. And the fact that he played him, top aided with him, he had, uh, he also had like Ghost Rider, Carnage Silver Surfer, Captain America Pegasus, Scott Porter, Scott Porter. This is a Defenders theme team. That's with hilarious. No Prime Hulk. No with, Prime. with no Prime Hulk. Yeah, no Prime at all, actually. Just like his sideline. No Look a little man? empty. No absorbing man. Kind of wild. So, again, yeah, shout out Andrea, one of the IPF winners last year. Still made it to Worlds this year, which is awesome. And I just, I love that team. It's actually my phone background. Somebody, the Heroclix Italy page made like an edit of Andrea riding Pegasus Cap with Soldier <laughs> Supreme and Carnage Surfer. And I'm like, I'm going to make that my phone background. That's hilarious. So, I congratulations to, I for that, it. Andrea. Yeah. You deserve so, it. So, you, you got to be my phone background for, I don't know couple months here maybe wow it's pretty cool lock it in well i don't do the the cool rotating background you do i just kind of like to have one and then i'll change it every you know who knows who knows when when it feels right but yeah (laughs) that is uh that is whatever i want to do you can see all of top 64 on our facebook i'm not going to shout out 64 people that's insane but something that congratulations is, if you were one of those people. seriously though, congratulations if you were so like uh, a fun thing for people that weren't there and maybe didn't know this but we had 191 players i want to say that's right yeah so that's roughly about 30 ish 20 something plus more players than last year so a good steady increase of players which we absolutely love to see we, they did five rounds uh swiss cut to top 64 and they played 64 that night and then it yep. was 32, 32 on, Sunday. on Sunday. So, yeah. So, that was awesome. I love that we had so many players. That is how we had to do the tournament structure. Honestly, let's just keep the world championship growing. Like, please, 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 let's keep the world championship growing like how it's already been growing. And let's just have more and more players cut to a bigger cut. You know, it's fun. And it also, it's really cool when you cut to such a big number, 64. It's yeah, so when I much heard more, 64, like, so I was like, well, if you don't make that, I mean, Jays. And then I was but like, oh, like, wait, no, yeah, that's like, like a third of the field. People, yeah. So it is. It still is like a harsh hit. It's a third of the yeah, a third of the field. So it's pretty just. It's just so awesome. I I love seeing that it was a big cut like that. It allowed a lot of crazy things to happen. Logan, the team world champion, the day before paired up against uh, Kenny Minx. He lost. went undefeated again. So at he, this he again point, went undefeated. He's a, like twelve and zero or something yeah. on the weekend. Manny was the the lowest scoring three and two to get in mm-hmm. by like fifteen points. Otherwise, he wasn't going to get in, which is crazy. And then he won with an upset victory against Logan. So, like, more crazy stuff, like, allows, like, things like that to happen, which is just so nutty in, again, in top 64. So, it's so cool. It's just kind of like how last year Isaac was the number one seed, and then Paris, the 32nd seed, strength of uh, schedule is what actually got him in. And then he ended up, like, beating Isaac, which is, again, just another, you know, it, it, call it what it is. It's an upset. Yeah, you know, it's when an you're, upset. When you're bottom seed versus top, that's an upset. So, that was crazy cool. So, like, cutting top 64 allowed for all sorts of, like, 
crazy stuff to happen, which is a ton of fun. So yeah, shout out to everybody that did get top 64. If you want to see them, you can see them in Anthony's beautiful handwriting for the pairings uh, up on our Facebook, which is great. Also, shout out Anthony Barnstable. When we were doing the uh, whole screenshot and I, I would post pairings on Facebook, every single time he sorted them differently in the spreadsheet so pairings were a different format. <laughs> so Anthony just, just, I feel like he's just trying to drive me crazy because the pairings were completely different. Like almost every time, guys, I was like, Anthony, what are you doing? Why are the pairings always different? And then he wrote them out this one time to show like what the actual pairings would be versus just top 64. And so that was really fun. So Anthony's, I don't know, he's hilarious. He's a quirky little guy. What can I say? Oh, then also top 32. Again, totally different, which is hilarious. So yeah. And then we, um, and then we got serious, Ian. We did. We, got, we got very serious. serious. And Sunday was a serious day. Sunday was interesting. Uh, wow. I mean, just looking at the field, it's. It, I did not expect that. You guys heard it. I was very public about it. I was like, "Yeah, Ghost Rider. He's kind of like the best figure ever." Boy, was I off base with that one. He was on one top eight team. <sighs> He's he is strong though. But man, yeah. Him People just didn't bring him out. Team was wild. I think I was correct in my analysis of Mern in that, you know, I was really hype on him, but he's not fully that guy. He's not the top three guy. Uh, MOE, anyone, I mean, geez, anyone could call that. Big surprise. Yeah, MOE of course. Uh, was everywhere, and it was, it, that's no surprise, but that's why you pick it. I was honestly surprised by the amount of carnage surfers we saw in top eight. Yeah. That was, I don't know, I just thought. He fell off, and I was wrong. I was totally wrong. The uh, the big thing with top eight, top 16 was, I mean, it's not like she wasn't there, but she wasn't there as much as I thought she'd be, the Death Metal Wonder Woman. So, yeah. again, a bit off base there. It's weird. So many people shift up their teams, and they're not public with it, mm. which that's totally fine. Like, I don't want people knowing what I'm playing either. That's a fair stance to have. So the data I was sourcing, I think, was just way off base. It's crazy to me that Alex Mater went back to like Spider Man Prime when he yeah, was seeing so much success with his build. Like he was aware that people were practicing against him, and I guess that elected him to move on to something else. That's what he's got reps with, though. So there, there's a lot of factors that go into worlds, and I, you know, PJ, Matty G, and Lucas all elected to play the same team of Zodar Sanan. Because this was so cool. Who has practiced against that? And the answer is nobody. Who even knows how that figure works? That is a fantastic element of surprise. It puts your opponent in such a tough spot when it's just like a guessing game on what you should when do. When are they going to come out? Well, and that was just so huge that Amet's Tomb got banned because oh, now yeah. if tomb existed, you finally it's get now you finally get the choice of like how and when you want to bring out Zodder and on, mm -hmm. which is just the huge part of it, you know. Yeah. And as like you were building with it, and I was like, I really want to play with them, and like working on that earlier this year, and then and then Amet's Tomb to, became a thing, and it's like because, never yeah, mind, we just that couldn't do it, sucks. and now it's like ah, oh, love to see like just the beautiful like player of like Ahmed's tomb and like seeing it so gone many just like and then seeing his daughter Sanan who are so cool they are really it cool. rocked and they just look sick they're seriously one of my favorite ultra chases ever made I'm so happy it makes me want to play them That's sadly great. I can't play them like this anymore no a very brief window you could <laughs> but I literally play everything else on this team is rotated except for like Khonshu like, and Zadar Sanan and yeah yeah, <laughs> like five things didn't oh, rotate. On the oh, scene. motorcycle, motorcycle's still there. Don't worry. Yeah, you're good. You basically have the build. One, no, <laughs> two, three. That's, that's tough. Four things. Four things. Five things. Six things. Six things did not rotate on this team. That's it. Hilarious. You gotta love it. So there was funny. a lot of creativity in. Top there really eight, was. Though. I was really impressed by it. The return of Carnage Surfer. I I almost feel bad. It's like I should have given him more credit. But he I was mean, just it's, so it's like off I the said, radar I really just did not expect him to to come back. Dude, double camo making top as well, dude. Adam Freeman. It's and like Oscar. it's acknowledged. It's like he's still good. It's like oh, but he's the same points as Kong, and then Kong gets errated, and it's like well, we've then, kind yeah, of forgotten about it him. Doesn't but make sense. Here we are. Yeah. Carnage Silver Surfer was everywhere in top four, top eight. He was. He's top still, two. <laughs> still that guy. He's yeah, still top being two. played by Nick. Yeah. The uh, the biggest highlight though, and the bingo card that nobody had is. Pretty much Dylan's entire team. Nobody is betting on no. Jennifer Kale. People gave up on that figure. And I gave up. I don't like Jennifer Kale. I kind of still don't. No offense, Dylan. 
but uh, I still don't really love Jennifer Kale. Even when Man Thing came out, they're still just like, eh, she dies. And the main reason, Kong Quake. Yeah. So people were less scared of Kong, I think, is what that says to me. Uh, Man Thing. That's a figure that I enjoyed, but I've never been like a full champion of. I he was is, like, he could he be a solid cool. tech piece. You know, if you were expecting, again, a lot of Kong, he deals with him very, very well. Hypermobile, high reducers, high stats. He's really good against Mern. So he was always something I looked at as more of like a tech piece rather than, you know, make the build around. Yeah. He's also just playing Kong, which Kong is still right. good. Yeah. Very good. Of course. But the icing on the cake, this and maybe is, even the cake so itself. Wild. It's so cool. Equipped with Avatar of Tarret, Brother Voodoo. Who, again, a figure that I loved, a figure I was very excited to play, but also, like, wrote off. It's like, okay, well, no one's playing him. Surely there's, like, something wrong with him or whatever. No, he's a world champion figure. This figure does two free penetrating damage. And with the errata to Kong, just hitting him once, it's like, all right, Brother Voodoo says you're dead. I don't really care about the negative effect. When it you think cool. about what he's able to do to a majority of the field, like Carnage Surfer, like, I'll just hit you off your senses clicks, bye. Now you're dead. And yeah. now I'm going to delete you. Like, Two free damage. Free damage. I mean, I think this is just the ultimate reminder that you cannot underlook just take damage. Carry yeah. him up, take damage. You walk next to me, take damage. Oh, I have a small negative effect. You get to play some things. Eh, don't care. You took two damage. I killed something. Yeah. Usually the trade-off of scoring points for negative effect, it's probably pretty worth yeah, it. Dealing damage is pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Dealing pretty damage is pretty good. No trick arrows on this build no, either. No, no trick arrows. The probably biggest staple across the board. The only equipment being, yeah, I guess, Sinestro Ring on Scott Porter. That's crazy, actually. Wow. So Dylan just, I mean, Dylan being like cool newer team. to the scene. I know. It's Playing so a cool impressive. team that is very much his own and winning it all and just being a great sport throughout the entirety no, of it. A great uh, member of the community all around. Yeah. Like, for every day of the event, like, Dylan's just a great guy. So, so it cool. really couldn't have went, like. Such a great oh, person. I almost forgot. There is one more build that I really do want to shout out, and that's Josh Summers. Oh, yeah. He made top 16, and his team is... I don't even know like fully what I'm looking at. It is, it is so crazy. He spent a good 15 minutes with me explaining all the different intricacies of his team, and I was just like... How do you even think about this? He has to be like completely off the grid with things. Because oh, interesting. This is a team that I think has like zero influence from anyone outside. Oh, I didn't realize that's who that was. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. Yeah, I know, right? Wow, dang. Yeah, I came up to him the first day and I was like, is this you? He's like, yeah. I was like, I knew it. <laughs> that's cool. But he has Butterfly at 60. He also has Man Thing at 55. He has the Penguin, which uh, is like the play or the the in-store play one that came with oh, the yeah. Joker. Yep. The ones that we thought were going to be way more impactful than they were. Again, yeah. you know, you can be wildly off base. Uh, equipped with trick arrows, King Deadpool and Elsa Bloodstone with pumpkin bombs, Scott Scott, and then the Lucas PJ bystander. His sideline is the Iconics Poison Ivy, Necron, Mern, Carnage Surfer, Ace, and then he had Iwua Prime, who he never brought in. Oh, but he largely said, so "Oh, that was cool. just to make my opponent scratch their head." I'm like, "That's that's such a wasting your prime slot Dude, I on know. that." He's like, I thought maybe there'd be a match wow. where it could really be useful, though. He, like, never came up. Oh, dang. So he's telling me about all these crazy things he can do. Like, you know, Butterfly can swap into X, Y, or Z. The Penguin can also swap into these things. Like, there's overlap there. There's situations mm, where I put a plant right. marker under the trick arrows I dropped from Penguin. I move whatever Penguin turned into. Man-Thing jumps to it for free. Gets the trick arrows for free. So there's, like, all these different pieces. Like, if you sat across from this team, you have no idea what's going to happen. Like you, it's Pawn Stars. You have no idea what's coming across that map. It's crazy. Like the Poison Ivy being able to like then utilize the Man Thing bystanders. If you need to get around Cosmic Energy, here comes Ace. What does the Penguin want to be? Primarily Carnage Silver Surfer, but I guess there's some situations where Necron comes in. He's got Indigo Tribe Ring on the Scott Porter for free, so there's probably a situation where you're now healing up the Necron. Like I love this team because this is entirely his own. That there is, is really nothing cool. on this build that says like I've seen the game of Hero Clicks played. It's <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, no, in the yeah. sense of like competitive play, Ugh. he's like, I just thought these figures were cool. And also Josh is just such a fantastic guy. He's like, a cool guy. Just a re like such a nice guy. Another just great member of the community. I mean, apparently he got steamrolled pretty bad in top sixteen. He walked oh, over and goes tough. Yeah, just you know, is what it is. That's okay. Like I lost, but Dang. that's okay. Just like totally fine, like, wow, unfazed by it. I just 
yeah, I love this. This is what I want to see more in Hero Clicks. It makes me almost feel bad because I think I build on the fringe. This guy said the fringe. Totally I'm ten miles yeah. out <laughs> and I'm balling. I'm nowhere near it. So yeah, I mean, oh, just shout out to everybody who did as well as they did. It was yeah. it was so cool to see Hero Clicks at its highest level in such an open field. This is the most open worlds I've ever participated in. Yeah. I was wildly off base. Another thing people are saying is like, I bet five or six of the top eight teams are Colossus Primes. Zero. I said three. Zero. I was way off. That was inc- there was still Colossus Prime in like top 16, but yeah, none in top eight. None in wild. top eight? Nobody would have told you zero. No. I don't care who you no. are. No one is telling you zero. So Colossus Prime not even having a sniff at winning at all? That's wild. That is wild. Uh, that is pretty insane. Elsa Bloodstone... My favorite prime. I love seeing that. Pick. That was really cool. Number two, baby. Number two. We'll take that. <laughs> and Trick Heroes. Oh, baby. Yeah. So, Once again. Elsa Bloodstone shout out to Nicholas Madsen. Great guy. Great player. Sick team. Sick Mephisto team. Ultra Chase, too. Somebody that a lot of competitive players said, he's just a point farm. Too big of a risk. You can't play him. And he's it's rocking just, it. There's a resounding theme here of... A lot of the top two teams, uh, there's a good chunk of elements on these two teams where people said you can't play those things. And look what won. So, guys, take the opinions and the advice of others, including our own, with yeah, a grain of salt. The grain of salt, honestly. You build the way you want. You practice what you want. You can probably do pretty well with it. Again, that is within like some reason. Like, I'm sorry, Miles, your common lady mastermind is not going to win worlds. But I challenge you. I mean, <laughs> by all means. I don't challenge. That's not a prove, real challenge. Try to prove them wrong. Don't prove me wrong. Well, try don't to. Don't put yourself through that. But guys, build up. Op- Probably op- shouldn't. Build optimistically. Yeah. The figures you like, take them to the next level. Build some fun stuff. Seriously. Like, again, we, we always champion the choose like the figures that you like, the characters you enjoy playing, and just build with them and see how it goes. And it can go cool. super well. The other thing, too, that I think zero people would peg, I think... Most people would say maybe one is three Phoenix Sentinels in top eight. What? Huh? That is kind of wild. This is a glass cannon I've, team. I've, I've honestly, I've never liked Phoenix Sentinel. I think it's a cool. Like, I think I think what it does is cool, but I would never play it. Just oh, just like a, dude, just no. in, like me personally, I would never play Phoenix Sentinel. No, I would not either. You know, like, it's too glass cannony for me. It's it's too scary for yeah. me to play. And that's a big reason why I have the belief and, I do. And you can be surprising. a glass cannon. That's why I've played plenty of glass cannons. Not 75 point ones. No. Not not that expensive. Not that Captain looks... America hits you for four and you gone. And you just instantly gone. And yeah. You gone. I'm not. I ain't about that life. They proved us wrong. Oh they my did. Gosh. They did. They did. So I, I think that's the majority of the teams I want to talk about. I think another yeah. just final thing to highlight is 2 by 2 APOC did rear his ugly head. And Kamo. and Azareth playing it. Yeah, dude, two, uh, Kamo two Kamos in top out. 16. It was really One cool. One of them in tandem with Apocalypse. Yeah. So we always love seeing Kamo. Oscar's build was crazy. Oscar's build was awesome, man. rollouts. It was oh rollout God. city. <laughs> there was uh, a, lot of, a lot of really cool stuff. Daredevil Legacy, we saw him a handful of times as well, which is always nice. Uh, I don't know. I think that's about everything that I want to talk about. The rest of you guys... Congratulations again. There were just some really fun builds that I had to highlight. Also, Assassins being top 32 oh, yeah. is really cool. Because I think that's a keyword that has largely been written off as well. But very solid. Yeah. Also, on the final day, we got to see some great stuff. For me, on the shelf, I was very happy to see this. We got to see what the Captain America from the ice does. I'm not going to go into his dial. Maybe I'll do a video or something about it later. But it's really cool. It's like a really solid, just like comic accurate Captain America dial that I really enjoy. And then on the back, it's hard to get a picture of it, but you can read it. Um, it has just a really cool like shield bounce effect, which is something that I've wanted more shield bounce effects for Captain America. There's like two characters that have like shield bouncing effects. And so I feel like that's like the go-to and what Captain America should have. So I really love seeing all sorts of like fun stuff like that. Um, We still don't know what like the block of ice does. We see it's terrain stats and that it's blocking and it looks like it kind of has countdown clicks. So I don't know what all it could be. See, this is what I'm thinking. Maybe this is like kind of what the wall is, right? Oh, degree. I see what you mean. You know yeah, but I mean? as a figure, yeah, okay. Something that would be kind of cool. Kind of like that. Yeah, okay, that'd be neat. But yeah, so Captain America from the Ice, 
is like seems like a really cool figure. It's also a he is an icy card, and then the dial is like his shield, which I just absolutely love the stylization of this card really so cool. much. Like it's just it's so cool, pun intended. So yeah, I I really like Captain America from the Ice. I can't wait to see what, like what the ice like cube thing does. Will I probably buy three of these? Yeah, if I can play three of these terrain pieces on every team going forward, I probably will do that. Honestly, <laughs> uh, it's so cool. So I loved love 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 seeing that, which is pretty sick. And we just had a great day. We we got to film some cool videos. We got the master cut is is filmed. Luke was killing it. Yeah, that is uh. I'm I'm going to try and get it done in a timely manner, but oh my goodness, it's it's a lot, guys, but it's also really exciting. So it's really exciting. Short today kind of dug, well, didn't really dig through the footage, just kind of did some mapping of what I think I want, and then tomorrow will be the big day of really just putting everything together, and then hopefully Thursday I'm wrapping up, and you guys will be able to watch it on Do I want, Friday. Do I want what I think I want? Do I? <laughs> Maybe. I hope so. Do you want to get to some listener questions about Worlds? I think so. I'm trying yeah. to think if there's really anything else mm. to talk about. I I'm did forget sure one shout stuff. out. Mike Eskew gave me these really cool wooden Evil oh, yeah. Dead 2 dice that are made from like scraps of the Evil Dead 2 cabin. I can't believe I got a shout out. Oh my gosh. They were so cool. The dice aren't like numbered or anything. They have like different pictures on each side. So I'm sure you could probably map them out and like choose if you wanted to roll them. I'll probably never roll them. Honestly, I won't let my greasy you fingers know. touch them. Uh, but I, I love Evil Dead. Evil Dead, again, is one of my favorite movies of all time. You've heard yeah, it a million Resident times. Evil, no, 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 no. Evil Dead 2. <laughs> Evil Dead 2. And also, and also kind of like shout out Justin Hafford. We had a really good Army of Darkness Evil Dead talk one night, which is also really cool. So yeah, but I didn't want to pass by without shouting out Mike for those really sick dice. We have a bunch of questions for the show. If you're wondering why we didn't make a Facebook post, like most people, when we're in a hurry and we need questions for the show, ladies and gentlemen, we do our Patreon. We go to our Discord, we do a little at everyone, and we put it in the questions for the show so that way people can see it and we can get those questions in crazy cool and fast. So if you want to support everything we do, a lot of the upfront costs, you know, um, equipment, eating, <laughs> food, gas, whatever for worlds, for big events like these. If you enjoy big events, like what we do at worlds. Oh, you obviously. want commentary? <laughs> you want commentary? Maybe Get us you know, some microphones. Maybe you got to support us. I'm kidding. Because maybe we got to buy all sorts of new microphones and all this other new stuff, which we, we would have to do for There commentary. is a little bit of equipment. There will be. I mean, ultimately, be a little bit. I'm not asking people. But also, of course, <laughs> thank you, WizKids, for bringing us out to worlds. But it is how we do a lot of what we do, guys, is thanks to you, the listener, the player, mm -hmm. the people that just enjoy nice. our content. And it's really thanks to that that we get to yeah, do what we do and do what we love. So also, I was able to give a bunch of action pays tokens. pays for the giveaways. It pays for the giveaways. Giveaways, also very true. We, the giveaways, we the really fun action tokens and stuff that get made. I'm, I have a big batch of like Iconics ones and Masters of Time slash going to try to do as many Black Panther ones as I can. That like, like seeing like the Shuri stuff. So I'm going to have a bunch of new action tokens hopefully coming within the next month or two. So now's a great time to join the Patreon if you want like Masters of Time tokens, like special ones, Predegaton tokens, stuff like that, right? And then Black Panther tokens and like Beetlejuice, the Say His Name tokens, which we didn't really touch on. Say my name, but say he my name. is, Beetlejuice is crazy cool. Uh, we're not going to really get into him too much on the show, but we got to show him off in the live stream. So maybe, maybe scroll through, let's say Friday. He's going to be so broke. He's so nuts. No, he's insane. Like time After, breaker plus At first I was Beetle like, Juice oh no, he's, so he's like solid. Sure, you can do that. But then yeah, as soon as you said time breaker, I'm like, oh no, wow. <laughs> like Autonomous it, needs to like not be printed. Yeah, it needs to it needs to stop. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I don't know how many autonomous broken interaction needs to happen before it's like maybe we should maybe just we not. shouldn't do this. Yeah. So questions from the show from our Patreon on our Discord. The Megat asks, "How was the HeroClix Syndicate section of the show?" I don't know. I haven't listened. I haven't to listened back to it, but I had a good time watching that. you guys. I thought it was so funny. It was good. Yeah. Trusty Vault Boy asks, "What was some hot tech you enjoyed or were surprised to see?" Uh, I, think I think we, we already went over that. We did it. touch on that. Thank you. Uh, Matt asks, "Will you come back stronger for the Miles arm wrestling rematch?" Maybe I will. Maybe I, I won't. hope so. Maybe I'll come back weaker. <laughs> Skinny Steve era. Maybe maybe I'm finna quit working out for the next year and <laughs> come just, back skinny Steve. Yeah, starve myself. Skinny Steve era. I mean, my skinny modeling. Steve era. The Megan asks again. Any teams that surprised you making it in top sixty four? Dark horses, off meta, etc. I think we did also answer that. In yeah, all of our team I stuff. Think, I mean, dude, brother Voodoo won worlds. 
Yeah, that there. is just crazy. There's your answer. There's the dark horse. That is the darkest horse, I think, yeah. possible. It's pretty crazy. Uh, too many arm wrestling questions, guys. Uh, how do you feel knowing the Generation Clicks is so much stronger physically? Um, I think I think, uh, I think Miles knows he was doing tricks. I think he knows he was doing He's tricks. He's doing tricks? I think, I think he this knows. This new news. I think, I think he knows that He's he. a magician. I think he knows that he knows like these arm wrestling tricks that, uh, that I was trying to like raw strength. And I think he knows how to like, you know. Make well, that's work on in his you. favor you more. You got to do more little bat. You got to read some Batman. There's this thing called read some prep Batman. time, which allows him to never oh. lose. Yikes! So no, I don't know. I'm more. I'm do. more. Uh, you know, you can't part throw of... a shield in an arm wrestling match. That's all no, I'm saying. That's true. No, you can't. Prep time. Wesley asks, "Will you arm wrestle?" <laughs> Jeez! Stop! <laughs> Stop! Will you arm wrestle Oliver Redman next? No, I won't do that. That'd be embarrassing. <laughs> I would lose t- way too fast, even faster than how I oh lost against God. Miles. Good Oliver would crush me. Chef Mikey asks, "Has any teams from Worlds inspired your team building for states come October?" Yes, yeah. yes, it really has. Honestly, man, thing. seeing top sixteen made me itch. Where I was like, you know, this whole weekend, people ask me, "Don't you miss playing? Don't you miss playing?" I'm like, "No, no, no, I love coverage." But then at top sixteen, I was like, "Dang, I really wish I was playing that right now. I could really go for a little, a little hit of that three hundred modern right about drop now." Some right now. I, oh my gosh, I wish I could have been dropping constructs this weekend a little 100%. bit. Not even gonna lie, I'm excited to start playing at inspired. our at our states oh well he becomes a little weaker i think post rotation but at the same time he has a few open opportunities camo i'm definitely going back to man thing a thousand percent i still like super rare ghost rider and the second masters of time is legal i'm already brewing up like nine thousand teams we're gonna have some great great podcast segments yeah no question very excited uh, Trizzy Vault Boy asks, is a new wave of up-and-comers finally cracking into top cuts or making waves? I think so. Definitely. I, I think when you have a more open meta, I think it does open up more like new players because now Discovery, there's there's so much more that you can interact with. So players who are more dead set in their ways of, oh, you know, X figure's the best, so you play X figure. The people who aren't as like integrated or maybe they're just not as... You know, again, like talking about Josh, how it's like, have you seen a competitive Euroclix team? Those people can shock you. They it looks like they're you. thinking outside the box, when in reality, they're not putting themselves in a box to begin with. Yeah. And that's why it's so impressive. The box was never there. The box was never there. What's for in the people. box? What box? What box? No, really, exactly. Because they're not just going off of these, like, oh, so-and-so say this, or so-and-so has been building this. It's like, I'm just going to play 300 modern Heroclix. What do I think the best team in Heroclix looks like? Yeah. That's what it looks like to me. And that's really cool. Megan asks, less about Worlds specifically, but about the meta post-rotation. What do you think will happen? I think we kind of covered Masters a little bit of post-rotation. Masters of Time is going to do a belly flop into the world of I agree. competitive hero clicks. The more we like talked and like broke it down, I was pushing the car right down. I was like, dang, Masters of Time really is a Wonder Woman level set. That I'm just has Highest so impact much set stuff. in, like seriously, like five years. Masters of Time is legit. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of play- playable stuff. So I'm really excited about that. Are there any figures that you are just dying to play? Shifting Focus Batman. Mm. And Kingpin Prime with Shadu. And Flash Raptor. And King Jefferson. And Despero. Oh, King I, Jefferson is up there for me. Reverse really. Flash. I, I can't wait to drop some lightning on some fools with King Jefferson. There's so many he figures that I'm there. dying to play right now. But number one for sure is uh, Shifting Batman. No yeah. question. Has WizKid sent over any soon-to-be Iconics? Can we expect a video of them? Maybe. Mm, maybe 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 i hope so thoughts on beetlejuice i love them broken uh, i can't wait to go see beetlejuice beetlejuice this weekend i forgot that movie came out honestly oh yeah people um, were asking if we had seen it I'm and like, i was like oh, honestly dang, yeah. didn't know it was I out need to see it. but now i like he's also a figure who's like i literally can't wait to play beetlejuice <laughs> we can bring all our time breakers we to br- the movie <laughs> oh you're right oh my god it'd actually be so funny Hey, there's like nothing cool happening this weekend at all. Like, there's nothing, like, there's no form of entertainment to see this weekend, I don't think, at all, Ian. So, we should just go see Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yeah, no, there's none. There's I can't think of anyone close to us who no, has anything going on who no, would love us to support. Definitely not anything. I actually that we can't, should go 100% support. I'm going to be working. I, oh, dang. That actually. But I'll figure out a way to go. Oh. I'll leave early, maybe, probably not this weekend, but next. Maybe this weekend if someone's. There I know, I know I can't go next weekend, so I will actually be going like, this I'm, weekend. Sometime. I'm not back in. Th- to work until two days from now. So it's like, when I get back, I'm going to have to lock in. Yeah. Because I just missed like tough. nine days. So. 
Yeah, it'll be fun to be filled in on all the drama and whereabouts and blah, blah, blah. Uh, Hotel Matt, world. Matt Reed with a great question. Should we go back to judges checking build sheets so they can confirm that the builds are correct? Nah. Yes, no, yes, we should. <laughs> uh, nah. We didn't touch on this, guys. And I don't really, I don't love it because it kind of sucks, but there were a handful of times throughout the event where somebody forgot to put something on their build sheet and then it was given to the player's choice, the opponent's choice, of whether or not they allowed that person to play the element that was on their build but missing from their build sheet. And that happened, as far as I know, twice. And it happened in Top Cut. And it was not great. It was a little messy. It didn't feel great. But, yeah, I guess the rules are the rules. But also, like, come on, man. This is Hero Clicks as a game, as far as that goes, is very lenient. That happens to you in a card game, DQ. That's yeah, it. Yeah, that is done. also very true. You would just get disqualified. So, honestly, it, it is nice that at least these people got to play. And it felt tough. Um, but, yes, I think that would have – judges checking build sheets would have solved it. But j- judge build verification is mm-hmm. necessary. I like it. I think it'll go by faster now that tarot cards are gone. But they also decided to not really do it this year because they were running so behind on other events. So, yes, it was a bummer. It was really bad that those things happened. But also, so hopefully just, uh, uh, just hopefully in the future we verify builds. I think people are open. You know, have your opinion on what happened. Ultimately, it is not the fault of any one thing. It is multiple factors. Yes. So when you do form your opinion, just consider the stance of everybody involved rather than, if I was this person, I'd feel this way. Where it's like, okay, well, what about the other two, three, four, five things that it got this far, you know? Think about it from a multi-factor perspective. It's not black and white. And when that happens, you get gray. So in gray area, there's going to be differing opinions. So whatever you decide on, you know, just know that uh, it wasn't one person saying yes or no. It was a right. lot of people. And ultimately, you can have your stance on it. I think we just need to be better in the future, and that solves it. I agree. Luke, Luke, Luke asks, what is the best cook outside? It's Hush Puppies. Man, those I bacon love, ranch I love wraps. Hush Puppies. Got a lot of bacon in there for two bucks. Yeah. Impressive. I will say, speaking of cookout, I only had one shake. One ice cream shake this that weekend is at crazy. Worlds, which was wild. With all the garbage we were and dumping in our know, body, dude, that is wild. There's never, there's never any ice cream, though, available. You got a Frosty, too, though. I did, oh, that's right. I did get a Frosty. I honestly I saw that. I was like, I want a Frosty right now. That I'm not, not going to lie. I, uh, I'm not big on the Wendy's Frosties. It was okay. It's not my favorite fast food I just kind of wanted cream. some ice cream. So yeah, I was like, yeah, that's how I felt. Yeah, you know, oh, here, got to bring this up, actually. Earlier today, this is so unnecessary. Okay. Jeff was like, yeah, we went to 10 Wall. He's, have you been there? It was so good. I was like, so mid, dude. Yeah, so mid. Frosty like is it. like similar ice cream to that. It's kind of like thin ice cream. It's just mid, dude. Yeah. It's not bad. It's not Honestly. great. It hit the spot. Yeah. For how much people were, like, hyping up 10 and Wally's, too, I thought mm-hmm. it would be better. I wasn't impressed by This is by just it. a local this, ice cream yeah. shop, by the way. <laughs> so but the like, ice cream consistency is comparable to the Frosty. Yeah. Not huge on it. No. And my brother, Jeff, if you're listening, you're not. He's you're wrong. Not. He's definitely not. You're wrong. <laughs> Miles asked less of a question and more of a statement, but this was easily the best worlds, and it's all thanks to you lovely gentlemen and Asael. Despite Aka Miles being a tad rude and not saying goodbye, I would like to say thank you, and I look forward to seeing you guys again. Aqua Miles does need his shield as a conqueror of the Calder Sea. Well, thank you, Miles. We yeah, appreciate thanks, Miles. that. Miles. It was great hanging with you as well. And Aqua Miles, he's mm. all right. Yeah, very abrupt. Yeah. Very abrupt. Very abrupt. <laughs> Alex asks, it felt like worlds snuck up on me, which I originally decided was because I've been so busy this year. But now I realize I sorely missed the Dial H Road to Worlds team building articles that we got last year. What needs to happen for those to come back? I mean, asking for them, just like this, I suppose, being like, hey, I'd like yeah. to see those articles. I, I, I had a lot again. of fun. There were some times where I was like, oh, no, I got to make a team. But then there were times where I was like, oh, I can't wait to post this article or like, you know, do a fun little write-up so people can kind of see what we're building. Those were really fun articles, and those would be fun to do again. I would absolutely do them again. Yeah. So, yeah, if you want that, hit the WizKids page. Bother yeah. them. No, don't do let that. Let the people at WizKids <laughs> But do know. let them know if that you want more articles. Yeah. Like, give them the feedback, and we'd be happy to provide those again. Absolutely. Bill asks, since states are silver this year, is there any figure or team you guys would love to see played this year? We obviously don't know the ban list yet. I honestly have no idea. Building for silver gives me a headache. I'm not going to lie. I, it's so hard. It's really difficult. It's oh. really hard. It's really tough. So, And there, there's there been plenty of people where it's like, oh, well, you just need to look at... Uh, every time I build in silver, especially when it's 400, I get like 250 points, 300 points the way there. Maybe even to like 350. 
Sex. And then I'm just like, what am I rounding out this with? I feel like I have too much. Oh my gosh, I lose to X, Y, Z, A, B, C, blah, blah, blah. One, two, three. All of them. That's tough. And then I yeah. just... Yeah. Silver, again, it's like what my heart wants Silver to be and what it ends up being are just worlds apart. Just I think so the ban list can help solve that. But man, it is hard to build. I liked Silver Theme so much more. I like Silver Theme a lot. I more. like Silver Theme. I really because like Silver Theme. When you have too many choices, it's like, oh well, certainly that's a good thing because you have Team more choices. Team building decision paralysis. Yeah, it's like I was like, about really? to say. It just triggers the worst paralysis in me, and that's a big reason why going forward, uh, this entire year, I'm going to try to build non-theme. Oh wow! I don't want to play a single theme unless I'm goofing oh, around wow. with Batman. But my goal is really to really focusing on the mechanics. Break the, the bars. Break okay. those decade long theme driven team <laughs> building mindsets. Just shatter them. Yeah. That's the goal. So hopefully okay. that can help me build silver. I don't I don't know. We'll see. Same. Tristan asks, Are you happy that Brother Voodoo is on the winning build for worlds? Yeah. I mean of course. I I'm just happy that it's like something creative, right? It's not necessarily it was like Brother Voodoo stand or anything, but it was cool seeing like a prime that wasn't really all used all that much, championed a little bit by you know by Ryan Redmond earlier this year, which is really yeah, cool. Yeah, Florida, that was um, it. Yeah, that was really about it. So it was cool seeing it. Like it's awesome. Tyler McConnell asks, "What hints for future sets are you taking wild guesses on?" Ooh. I think a little bit with like dual the ring wield stuff, the I think, legacy cards. I think that I think the dual wield lantern thing the makes wall. me have high hopes <laughs> that it's like we get like red and green guy, we get pink and red guy. Like if we're in a dual wield lantern, those are my biggest choices. Um, Smash and destroy. I'm just again. I'm really. I really, really, really want to see some creative uses of terrain. I want to see more effect terrain, which they already mentioned. But I really do want to see how characters are going to be able to interact with terrain. So it's not really wild guess, but like those are the things, those little just nibbles, those little tidbits they gave us that have my mind just kind of wondering, like, what could it possibly be? What could? Yeah. What do the numbers mean, Mason? I don't know if I have a lot of wild guesses like at this moment exactly, just because we've seen so much that it's like. Yeah. I'm just excited for what we've seen at this point. There's so Pretty much, much down the barrel. It's, it's just, so cool to look at that stuff. It's a good time to be a Heroclix fan. It's with the Spider-Verse stuff, I think there was a there was a comment in our YouTube where it's like, with Spider-Ham being in there, I really hope we get Port Grind. Like the oh, yeah, the version. Venom. Yeah, that is that would be cool. And it's like, yeah, that, Venom piggy. that's... Venom piggy. If that's a wild guess, sign me up for that one. Yeah. A uh, little black suit Spider-Ham. I'll take that. That sounds awesome. Miles is uh, giving us some questions that were asked on his post. Matthew Zielinski asks, why did Calder throw the arm wrestling match? I guess we'll never know. I guess we'll never know. So Bill and I could become millionaires. Yeah, pretty much. And then Calder's just now finding this out, but Bill and I had lines on the match, and everyone bet against Miles to win. <laughs> so we fixed it, and now Bill and I are millionaires. Um. Wow, that's actually that's exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. And then Matthew Zelinsky also You won't know asked, it, but there will be signs. Is it true that Aka Miles is smaller in real life? No. No, Miles is like Miles is taller in real life. He's like really tall. He's a tank. Yeah. I feel like we've talked about Miles a lot. So much this episode. A lot. This is this our episode. Miles wrap-up the episode. The Miles, the Miles episode. Dennis asks, would you mind addressing... Uh, well, I guess we did. We addressed this. Um we addressed yeah. this. Yeah. Just, this is uh, kind of talking about like the build sheet stuff and, and everything. So, yeah. Do your own investigation. We talked about this. Think about the factors involved and draw your own conclusions. Ultimately, I don't think there's a right answer. I think for, depending on the perspective you look at it from, it's you can take this side it's or you a, can take that it's side. It's a really gray scenario. It really is. And ultimately, it it's just kind of a rough one. So it like, is just rough. Oof. He does go on to say, though, amazing work, guys. Thanks for all the effort you put into these events simply for the love of the game. And that's just it, man. I, mm-hmm. I love this game. Today at work, I I was just like talking with all like everybody that whoever was like, so how was your trip? And I was like, honestly, it went by too fast. I love this game so much. You know, I, then I have to explain to them what Heroclix is, you know, which is always fun. Um, and I just kind of like just go off to say like, yeah, but I just love it so much. And so like, even though I'm not playing, I played like two games this whole mm-hmm. weekend, which is two more, very fun, games. which is actually more than we played in past worlds, which is kind of crazy Zero. to think about. <laughs> um, and so, like, yeah, even though I played, like, two, like, sealed games of HeroClix, but just being surrounded by it, being surrounded by, like, so many people that I've just been able to call friends, which is so and awesome. And they're on the same level of they're just, like... They're on the like, same problem, just loving I'm this a, game. So I'm innately healthy. thinking about this game yeah. all the time. And it just and it just rocks. So, yeah, I was like, yeah, I do, we do it for the love of the game. We just... I really just do love this game, like, so much more than, like, any other game, any other, yeah. like, thing. And yeah. shout out, again, in, in the similar sentiment to you guys for 
giving us so much purpose and like over the years yeah. really legitimizing and validating like the things that we do do yeah. because I don't know what I'd be doing if it wasn't this and I guarantee you it would not be as fun and if you guys did not support us in the way that you do if you didn't treat us the same way at the events you know maybe we wouldn't even be doing events if you guys didn't just like look out for us so yeah really like we get to do what we love largely because of you guys because of the existence of this game and you know, I'll gladly sacrifice for that. If it means that you guys have a better time, absolutely. Absolutely. That's what it's always been about. And, yeah. uh, you know, you just you got to look out for your fellow Clicks player. Yeah. You guys do that for us. So, of course, we'll return the favor. One from Bill. How disappointed is Calder that a player was going to make another Captain America? Came And he came within a razor's edge of winning, but couldn't get it done. Uh, that crushes me, Bill. I did talk uh, with Nicholas Madsen on the live stream. You can you can find this, and eventually a lot of the interviews and things will be clipped, which will be really fun. But we chatted before finals. I want to say it was around top four or so, and I asked him like, so like, who will you make? Like, you know, what figure do you want to make if you win Worlds? And he he mentioned like Captain America from Secret Empire, and I'm not gonna lie, Secret Empire is not one of my favorite Captain America stories. I don't love Secret Empire, but there are cool moments in it that happen. And then I kind of chatted with him later after the day was done. I was like, "Well, you gotta tell me a little bit more about like the version of Cap. Like, what was your idea for this?" And then he kind of went into it. I'm like, "Ah, oh, okay, that that really would have been really cool. You know, like that would have been kind of neat." I wasn't I wasn't one to one thinking the same version of Captain America, and I was like, "Okay, yeah, that was a really cool like a really cool moment." So I didn't like enjoy that. And so yeah, it is whatever Dylan ends up making. I'm I'm sure it's gonna be really 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 cool. Dylan's awesome. But yeah, Bill, I do. There was part of me was like, you know, again, I wanted both those guys to win. Like, it's so lame, but it's like, I really wish, I wish both of them could have won, honestly. Hi, I'm Jake from State Farm. And honestly, <laughs> I'm rooting for both teams this Super Bowl because I just love a healthy competition and I must remain neutral. That is that is really how I felt when it got down to top table. But yeah, I, no, I, I do I, wish. No, I agree with you on that, honestly. Yeah. Either either of those people walking Seriously, away they're with both the win, just so I would awesome. be equally as excited. Yeah. Uh. The fact that they also, this is another note that's very funny. They both crit hit on initiative and had to re-roll. Yeah. It's like, like I think Nick rolled first and it's like, you know, in his head, he's like, yeah, good luck. <laughs> nice. And then Dylan's like, you know, pushes the glasses up. He's oh, like, hey, you've only revealed my trap card. That's so funny. <laughs> That Dennis, uh, we finished our last question here from Dennis the D-Man. Also, is WizKids killing it by releasing so many awesome sets, must-have chases, iconics, con exclusives, and promo figures, or is it all a bit too much recently? I can't quite tell, but I know I am spending way more. Thanks. They are killing it. I, yeah. I, kind of like I said a little earlier, it's never been a better time, I honestly feel, to be a hero who's player. Dude, jumping in right now, if my first set was like <sighs> Masters of Time, are you kidding me? Broken. Overpowered. What? Overpowered. Like I just, mean, even if you started with like Wheels of Vengeance, this has just been such a good year. Like Wheels of Vengeance, in the next phase, which you know wasn't the greatest, but then you're right back with Deadpool, and then you have Masters of Time, yeah. and now you're staring down the barrel of Black Panther and Collector's Trove. I am so excited for all of these sets. Like, oh my gosh. Black Panther, definitely like lower on the rung of the ones coming up. But Collector's Trove is like right up there Honestly, with Masters of Time. I used to like share that opinion, but now I'm kind of like, okay, Black Panther, cook. The Vibranium mechanic is really It's, it's piqued my interest where I'm kind of like, okay, let's see what we can cook up. Let's see what we can do. Okay, I mean, Black, full transparency, me, Black Panther. just character-wise, I think I'm going to like Spider-Man more. I know I'm going to like Collector's Trove more. I I'm definitely gonna love Collector's Trove. Smash and There's Destroy. No I don't know I don't. about. I've never been like a big like Hulk guy. Which Smash? Come on. I'm interested. I think I, we Hulk already we already kind new. of ranked our sets. I guess, but yeah. like you know where I'm at. Like Spider Man is like you know literally could not care, and then it's like Black Panther's like sure okay. I'm mm -hmm. curious. And I am then, curious about it now. I and will then say Collector's that. Trove is like that. OMG. I literally can't wait. Yeah, Master the Time. Throw level objects threat. at me, you know, mm -hmm. please. And then Smash and Destroy, I'm really curious about Smash and Destroy. I really want to know what the train looks like. I think mechanically I'm, it can win me over, but character-wise, we'll see. That's what I'm thinking we'll is mechanically. We'll, well I think it's so open-ended character-wise, which is why I'm also excited. Well, you got your, just, your big boys, which big I don't boys. know. Big boys. Itty boys. The itty boys. <laughs> yeah. uh, whatever, however that song goes. Yeah. You know? Well, this is the like, big boy set. And it is I don't the big know, boy I've set. I've never been like, that's never been like my wheelhouse just for characters, bulky, I don't just think. bulky dudes. Just I'm strong. Yeah. I agree, Ian. Hulk fans are the worst. They are. They are. I hear Hulk fans don't carry chairs. 
They just that's sit true. down. They just sit down. They like somebody they who's big and strong. They smash their butt on a chair and they destroy everyone's idea of who they were. Whoa. <laughs> hypothetically. 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 Hypothetically yeah. speaking. You know, this is like. All could, hypothetical. Could be about anyone. Could be about anybody. Who wears a Batman costume that's slightly too, too small, small with a cape that maybe goes down halfway down his back. Oh my gosh. Anyone could be wearing that costume. It could be anybody. It could be anyone. Mm-hmm. But yeah, guys, that that is Worlds. It seriously went by too fast. I remember thinking like at the start of Modern, I was like, oh, geez, this is like... Yeah, this is... Hey, this is okay. Second to last day. And this is like, this is going to be like over soon. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my gosh. And then sure enough, it was over. So, but it With was that like... sentiment though, you know, it is weird. This year, every year I come home from Worlds, the last two Worlds, I came home and I was just like immediately sad. I was like, oh my gosh, Worlds is over. I was immediately thinking about the next Worlds. Yeah. And not to say I'm not this year. You already know I'm like a no, rat always. running around a little cage right now. I got so many ideas. I don't even know. But this year is very different. I think it went by quicker because it just it felt so much better. This was our, our best showing by far. It was the most fun showing, I think. I was just really, really proud of the work that we did. And previous years, I, agree. I left and I was just like, Man, we done more, we done left else. stuff on the table, yeah. and we definitely have some of that this year. You know, there were some things I was like, you know, I wish I would have got over to the pulp teams thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I that honestly, but because it was during modern and everything, it just totally escaped my mind. I There's was a like, lot going I on. I would have liked to see some of the the building that they had over there, and I just completely forgot about it. You know, straight up. But then there was like a few things where I was very happy that I was able to you know make some fun little videos or who we got on stream or what we got to, to preview yeah. or spoil like. There was still a lot that we were able to get done that I was just so happy about. The the triple streams, you know. Way cool. Yeah, I don't know. I won't lie. I was a doubter. I was like, I don't know, man. And and then seeing it in action and then seeing, like, the people at home, the, the few. I think there was, like, Garrett and Maya had posted of them watching multiple streams oh, yeah, at once. Oh, yeah, the March Madness which is, effect. Which is exactly, kind of like, up. what we had wanted to happen. And <laughs> yeah. so it was really cool to see that happen of them, wearing, like, watching the multiple streams at once. I was so happy to see that. You know, I was... You this know, is like what I, I had so as an idea in my head when we came here the first year. And obviously, we did not hit on that, like even close to that. So to finally get to the point where it's like, okay, this is what we wanted to do. And there's still so much more we can do. Obviously, something like, have you heard this one? Commentary? We will bring that to you guys, I promise. We've in heard a lot about commentary. You will get we commentary. Have heard so much about commentary. And ultimately, it's just like, yeah, thank you guys for trying to think of new fun ways to improve the stream or add something that's unique to it. And so it's really cool that the community has those ideas. So it's the always big fun. thing, too, is now in a positive light, let's echo something that was okay. said earlier. Hey, we're just two guys, but we're bringing in new guys. And those new guys are going to help us a lot with accomplishing what we want to do. And for you guys at home, that just means it's only going to get better. Every year it gets better. The player cards this year, I know people are like, whoa, what an upgrade. And I'm not going to disagree with that. I am happy with how the player they cards turned so out this cool. year. They're I really saw solid. somebody comment. It's like, this was the best prize that I got from the event. And that, what? That's yeah. awesome. To see people change their profile pictures. Oh, over it's the so days cool. I mean, and cards. talking uh, talking with some people like before awesome. Top 16 and everything, and that's like, Top 32, right? I'm like, oh, no, Top 16. Uh, it was like a conversation I had with Alex Mader. He was like, oh, wait, so I don't get a player card? I'm like, oh, no, Alex, you'll get a player card. Yeah, you were Top 16. Yeah, yeah. But, well, he was Top 64 at the time. Oh, And so, so sure. when I said that, he was like, well, you don't know. I'm like, oh, no, Alex, you'll get a player card. And then he did. And I was yeah. like, ah, oh, this rocks. So it was pretty. It was pretty cool. Scott Crampton had mentioned when he was thirty-two. He's like, "Yeah, I'm looking forward to the cards." I was like, "Bad news. Ooh. I hate it. Ooh, I hate we to made him a little more exclusive this. this year. Just a little more exclusive. And who yeah, knows? they should mean something. Maybe they'll. Uh, maybe this will show up in boosters. Hmm. I. We have no. Clue. Highly doubt this that. Is, this is just me be being cool. whatever. It would be cool. It'd be cute. But yeah, that would be wild. These, no, Liz no, no. kids, if you're listening, just saying, guys. You know, you're putting cards of players and boosters mm-hmm. using uh, hey, players' we used to artwork. Play. We, yeah. We still play. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> us? That would also be cool. I would also I've got some really you. embarrassing pictures of Calder. Please. Oh, my gosh. If I ever opened a booster <laughs> and I saw those, dude. All my fun edits of you? No. In the car? No. Oh, the car one is. A sideways fold-out no, of you in the car? No, No. Why would it have to be a fold-out? You gross. You. So big <laughs> that it's a fold out. It's a fold out. Mick Gritty Calder. Ugh. So many good that Calder is not... guys. I mean, all you, you don't even need to get his likeness approval. I think you probably already have it at this point. 
Kind of. I don't think so. You've been, you've done enough stuff for them to where they could, they could probably <laughs> oh, no. get by. Oh gosh! So you know, with kids, if you're listening, not those pictures. Let me know. Not those pictures. I've got some great pictures of him, Maybe, and I'm very cheap. Ian does have great pictures of me. The ones he is implying right now are not good pictures. Yes, of they me. are. No, they, they're, they're the best ones. No, they are not. They're the pictures that you no. were in a race to delete off of your Facebook. I did. I, I did. I hit. I, I hit slash deleted a lot of those posts. <laughs> So yeah. Wow, I'm guys. Just saying, just saying. Cool. Anyways, any any final thoughts on on World Zian before we wrap it up here? There were a few bumps in the road here and there. But honestly, for us especially, a lot less than previous years. Way less. And it was ultimately a smooth ride. Again, shout out to everybody like Ryan, Dova, John, Brian, Dusty, Anthony, ID, Aaron. Oh gosh, who am I missing else on the staff that we like really interacted with? I think that's pretty much yeah. the extent of it. You guys rocked so much. You guys really elevated our game. You you know, we gave you the picture, you helped us paint it and you made it bigger. Yeah. I can't thank you enough for that. It is really so cool to get to work with you guys. It's so fun to just hang out with you guys too. That really You guys are just great that really people. It's just truly really cool. It's so apparent that you care about the game and it's I'm really just excited for what you guys are going to do with how new you are to this. Like Hero Click specifically, I'm really looking forward to just the enthusiasm you bring to the game, and just the new ideas that you're going to have as well. Yeah. What about you, Colin? Absolutely. What you got? You know, I I just love the excitement that the community has right now, post worlds, and like just today we saw people posting about like new events that they want to run, like fan run events where they're and not. We like have RFC a lot of those coming too. Or not just, whatever, which is really cool. So. I, you know, you shouted out all the hardworking people at WizKids, and I obviously I agree with everything there. And I just want to shout out the community. You know, it's part of the reason Worlds is so much fun. Part of the reason I love going there every year. You know, I love the experience at Graceland. You know, staying at the guest house is because of the community. So just keep being awesome, guys. Keep uh, keep oh, being just. We do need to mention that quickly as well with the legacy cards this year. One of the fun things that we did outside of just like handing them out everywhere. Yeah, just straight up, here you go. Uh, we played a little shuffleboard outside the, the guest house. Classic, dude. We gave everyone one throw, and whoever threw it the farthest with one throw uh, ended up walking away with them. So that was that was a ton of fun. That was cool. I think we had like 20 people end up playing in that. It was, uh, it was a good time. We had a few people going head-to-head for some legacy cards as yeah, well. Yeah, that was fun. So yeah, that was, a, that was a fantastic night. It wasn't the scavenger hunt like last year. We tried a little bit. We did a little. We did a little something... It wasn't... Uh, Sometimes the vibes are just a little different. The vibes were different this year. Vibes people, were different. I don't think people were out as much, honestly. They were still out, but... Not to the same degree. Yeah, no. I can see, I see what you mean. Yeah. The party wasn't... I it mean, wasn't it was still quite, a great party. It was a great party. Again, like... Always if you a good go time. To, if you go to Graceland, if you're going to take away one thing here, if you go to Graceland, stay at the Graceland Hotel. Yeah. You will have such a better time. Oh, and... Jeez, shout out Vernon's Barbecue. John and Brian had this for lunch one day, and I was like, where did you get that? And they that said, was it's, good. It's literally like, walk down the sidewalk, five minutes. It's We're in Graceland. I'm like, oh, wait, that's like Graceland is like literally right here? And it's like, yeah. And I was like, I didn't know it's there amazing was... amazing how little a, we know about this Yeah, place. dude. I didn't realize there was year. a great food option right there. Why was I door dashing and standing outside for 20 minutes in the rain trying to talk these door dashers through how to meet Why me does nobody how know where me? the convention is? I don't know why is. they can't find... Like, that. that is like the... Ugh. Door dashers in Memphis? Y'all gotta get it together. I don't know. I don't know what it is. You guys this, the building is mythical the to them. I, apparently. But yeah, like this barbecue at Vernon's Barbecue and Grace Center is literally so good. I'm like, how is it just right there? Where it's like, now it's like, why would I ever DoorDash here ever again? Well, I'm yeah, pretty much we, just going to We DoorDashed a bunch walk, of fried chicken that just first gonna, day. That was, that was awesome. Though. That was really good that fried was really chicken. good. I don't, know, rem- I don't even really, remember the name really of it. Good. Sorry. Good look it up. I'm I think not it was Harold's, to... wasn't it? Was it Harold's? I thought, I thought that's what I saw. I like thought a... it was Deities. Oh my gosh! Oh. <laughs> I thought it was politician. That was a slow burn joke. That was a t- mm, that was a tough. I thought one. it was pretty good. No, that was it. No, it was good. It was clever. But it yeah, was, give yeah. me eight. what do you rank it out of ten? I don't know, like seven. Seven. I'll take yeah, seven. Seven. Yeah, that was, um, it was all right. But yeah, <laughs> Vernon's man. Oh my gosh! And just Graceland is right there. <laughs> just have it. So yeah, it rocks. And you know, thank you so much to the uh, to the staff at Graceland. Always being like pretty dang good. Pretty dang fun, pretty cool, and just yeah, hanging out. So I love it. I love this world. I love what we're able to do, and I can't wait 
can't wait for the future. I literally can't wait for next year because it feels like our year builds to this. And now it's like, all right, it might as well just be Christmas. Might as well be 2025. Yeah, it's like, the next really big thing you guys can look forward to. Well, is, we'll have some IPF announcements yep. leading into January, but we will also have the Clixies coming up in December for our big year wrap up show. It's going to be the biggest one yet. Yeah. And again, we keep teasing you with this. The prize for this year is the funniest yet. <laughs> it's so good. All the oh, I mean, I like it so much. I don't know. I'm not going to say anything. No, 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 it's don't, 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 don't. No, it's funny. so funny, and it's so fitting for the year. Yeah, so, it's good. The super fan really for this good. year, I mean, you could still potentially win it. You never know. Okay. There's no decision made until roughly a couple weeks out, month out. How do people get in the running for things like super fan? Um, comment on posts. Make sure you're interactive with Ian and myself and Dial H, you know. Chat on our, you know, YouTube videos. Maybe share our YouTube videos. Maybe spark some discussion about your favorite things about hop Dial in the H. Discord. Hop in the yeah, if you're a Patreon member, you know, hop in the Discord, chat in the Discord, be uh be in the voice channels, chat there, all that fun stuff, you know, like be a great member of the community. All those things can help you uh can help you be a super fan. That's true. You know, and you'll want to win this year. You will want to win this, this year. This is a good year to really, win. It's a really good year to win, uh really good year to win super fan. Like a very, very, very good year. Wow, I did not see a this golden year. I did not see this post before. Oh my gosh. Shout out Ryan Bookwood. What is this? What is this? All right. Wow, that's enough of that. Well, this was our, our world's wrap up. It was a blast. It was so much fun. We said that a million times. I want to say it a million more because I just had that much fun this year at Worlds. It was quick, but it was so satisfying yeah. that I'm not even like sad that it's over. I'm just like, no, wow, I'm just, that was like, that's exactly I feel, what I wanted from this. Okay, I'm good. I'm jazzed. I, I honestly, I feel like energized after this world. I feel like, yeah, mm-hmm. let's make some Heroclix content. Let's let's do some stuff. Let's I have some fun. I didn't mention this either. There's one more thing that I want oh, yeah. to talk about. I was able to snatch up a couple parademons. Oh, a couple. By by a couple, I mean quite a bit more than a couple. You were a fiend that day, yeah. dude. You I was walking around with any LEs left I had. And right, I was like, you got a parademon. Trading for parademons. You got a parademon? Just going nuts. Managed to get quite a few. And with that, I am going to be building some kind of light box display with a dark side in the center and some parademons. I want to get some this yellow will be, lights this will be really cool. going through the portal. It might even just be a part of the shelf. I have a few ideas, but also... I need to get a Justice League strategy game dark side, I think. Because he'll probably be the most fitting. That the parademon is like Yeah. Jumping coming out, out the of the portal. portal, it's like, oh yeah, him and this dark side are gonna look. If it ends amazing. up being the Masters of Time one though, I'm not gonna complain. No. But if I can get one of those for a reasonable awesome. price, he I looks, probably will. He looks like really, really awesome. He looks pretty I good. didn't think it would be, but the Parademon L E I think is my favorite of the bunch, even over the Batman. Wow. I really, dude, I'm a sucker for Trent You know, it's Lucent. crazy you say that. Honestly, that Batman is probably my favorite. Hmm. You like the Rat Basher? That I really like? do. I like that he's like a really Charlie crazy. Work. I do like that he's a really crazy, like, different version of Batman. That's probably what I like the most. But also, it's like easy because it was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, that's the guy I think I like the most, you know? Yeah. For like worlds exclusive specifically. Mm-hmm. It was just like, it was just really cool because the, the Marvel Parademons. ones were. They just look so good, though. Oh, I they didn't think look they good. looked that good. They do. They do look good, but I love the Brat Basher. I really, yeah, I do yeah, think I it's do just too. hilarious. It's like hilarious. Just Batman with a club, is... just McDonald's grimace Batman <laughs> with a Rat Basher. McDonald's exclusive. That's, it's just so funny. Yeah, did you guys pick up your world's McDonald's exclusive Batman, Batman? <laughs> with uh, sweet and sour sauce? That's actually that's honestly a figure that I can't wait to play. I think he's awesome. Oh yeah, he's I mean so I can't fun. wait to sideline him with the shifting focus where it's like, Ooh. all right, last you know, dang, last two raw, get rid of the entire ability to shift focus and just run. Yeah, wow. and it's like all right, so, you know, what if you're in a situation just to bash a couple of rats? I was gonna say hypothetical. There's a oh, rat okay. that needs bashing. <laughs> None of the shifting focus. Focus, get that done. Yeah, dude. You're playing against club. the TMNT set splinter. There's a rat <laughs> that needs bashing. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much for listening to the show. I've been your host, Calder Ness. For all your Heroclix content, videos, podcasts, unboxings, and so much more, make sure you dial H. Dial H for Heroclix is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Heroclix singles and seal products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Also, check out Shop.WizKids.com. You can use code DIALH10 to get 10% off your order. If you're paying attention throughout the weekend, you could have gotten some really cool convention-exclusive
exclusives while you were just at home, which is really cool that they're doing the whole online exclusives things and, you know, a limited thing. Because, you know, of course, you want to promote going to the event first and foremost, but then make it a little more accessible for those of you at home. So that's really cool. So support them when they do something like that because it's really neat. And like always, happy trails. Yeah, he's on your left. Yeah, he's on There's your a cap. Left. There's a cap. A Captain America. Yeah, he's on your left. Yeah, he's on There's your left. There's a shield. Left. There's a shield. And it's on your left. Yeah, he's on your left. Yeah, he's on your when left. When he's on your left, he's on your left. He's Captain America on your left.